Hey everybody, this is episode 10 of Biomast. Vote early and vote often. I'm Soraya Zell, and I am a, a co-host here on Biomast, as well as a CPM candidate. Awesome. And I'm Jason Larison. I am not a CPM1 candidate, and perhaps one of the only one in the room, as usual. Uh, and what we're going to be talking about tonight is, you know, as you can imagine, the CPM1 election, the voting is hot starting tomorrow, uh, this being Sunday night, and it's going to run from the 7th through, the, I believe, the 22nd. And the, the big message to everybody is just go vote. Uh, number one, go do a little bit of research. Number two, actually go on to the, to the email machine, like, you know, the get on the interweb and then go and vote because it does matter. And at the end of the day, everybody here that's in this channel and a lot of the other candidates, many of them truly have your best interest at heart. And some of them you'll agree with and some of them you won't. And it's up to you to go in and figure out, figure out a little bit of a little bit about each one, read their threads, but that's what we're going to talk about tonight is getting out the vote, uh, a little bit about the CPM one, and frankly, let's we're just kind of have a little bit more fun tonight and just kind of talk through uh, what we can, you know, what we can expect from Dust and perhaps Legion down the road. So with that, we're going to go ahead and continue with our intros. We've already heard from uh, candidate Soraya Zell, uh, his nom de plume on the screen here that we're looking at. Uh, we also have a biomass channel that's uh, set up in game that you can you can pop on to. And we've also pushed out a feed on, on Twitter so you guys know where to hop into the live stream. Hopefully you're already listening to it and so you kind of know where the live stream is. So with that, uh, we'll start off with Appia. Um, I'm sorry, I was I was trying to get uh, Sir Manboy the info to get on. Um, I'm Appia Vibia. Um, hey there. I'm I could 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 you come back to me and redo this? <laughs> Articulate as always, smooth as glass. Moving on, Iron Wolf Saber. This is Iron Wolf Saber. I'm CPM Zero Secretary, and I'm here to be just whatever. Again, as always, here to be whatever. Marcelia Delt. Hey guys, I'm Marcelia Delt. Uh, I'm CPM One candidate, and uh, get voting as soon as possible. Yep, awesome. And Pokey. Uh, Pokey Traven, uh, CPM1 candidate, and yeah, get out there, do your research, and get to know everybody. I think we've put together some good stuff, and there's lots of resources out there, so get reading. Kind of get a little bit of thunder from the down under. Hey, I'm the Black Jackal, uh, aka the Thunder from Down Under, yeah, and I'm a CPM1 candidate, and, and as everyone else is iterated above, make sure you get out there and vote. Read, make sure you read, make sure you vote for the candidate you want as number one, otherwise... I may not be in the running to hit number two vote. Sounds good. And Zatara. Hey guys, this is Zatara Rot, and uh, I hope you guys are checking out all the threads, going to vote match, and do your research. Make sure you get out there and uh, choose who you want to decide to choose. Eloquent as always. And Derry. Hey guys, this is Derry, uh, the other non-candidate here on the stream, uh, member of OSG, and yeah, um, make sure you guys. Get out there and you know, pick pick the best person, but just don't pick willy nilly. Uh, actually, pay attention and choose wisely. Okay, awesome. So again, we kind of talked about it just a minute ago. Uh, the the big thing for everybody is that the CPM one voting. Uh, by the time most of you hear the podcast, uh, since a lot of you download on iTunes, is going to be tomorrow. It starts on the seventh of July and runs through the twenty second. Uh, and my understanding is that the way you vote, you hop right on to the Dust website, the Dust 514 website, the official website, and uh, it's got a voting click. Uh, so that's what uh, I'm looking forward to te checking out. Me personally, I will probably be holding my vote until a couple days before the voting closes. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I'm doing that. And that's that's actually literally a lesson that a lot of folks learned during the, C the recent CSM election on the Eve side. And it's... We'll kind of explore a little bit about that. Uh, but like I said, I did want to kind of open up things and we'll talk through with each one of the candidates a brief shout out from them. Really, not really a shout out, but one sort of, you know, really poignant part of their platform or why you think you should vote for them. Uh, just a, a little personal message from each one of the candidates in the room. And again, let me be clear. You know, there's about 20 people running and we just happen to have you know, probably about eight in the room right right now. And it's not that we like these guys any more than others, although we like some less. Yes, I'm joking with some of you in the room since I'm getting hate eyes through my computer right now. But um, 
it, it's literally just the folks that happen to be on. And what we would like to do next week is those that weren't on tonight, we'd really like to try to bring you on. Uh, and then that way we can actually uh, touch on every single candidate that's out there so, to give you that little bit of a platform to talk to the folks. So with that, uh, what we're going to do is we'll start kind of going down the line. And literally, all the candidates get about 90 seconds, and I will be clocking them, where they can just literally kind of soapbox for just a minute and tell everybody why they should go vote for them number one on the ballot. Because remember, that's the only way you can really guarantee that your that your vote's going to work is when you prioritize it off the STV voting system. So with that, we're going to go a little bit out of order uh, as opposed to how we did the intros. And I'll kind of start down with uh, Soraya's up, and then we'll just kind of – I Roll started before. That. Yep, absolutely. That's right. Go ahead. Oh, okay, now you're intentionally doing that to me. All right. Um, I so, would never do that to you, for the oh, record. Yeah. At least yeah. not without some ISC sure. or real life favors involved. Oh, okay. So how Most much are you Most of which making? Killer's already paid. Oh, all right. Okay, so it's Killer's fault. Got it. All right. Um, so I'm Sarai Zell. I'm running for uh, CPM1, of course. And, and I'm my big thing is uh, pushing as much as possible it, a, a certain level of reasonable changes um i do want you know my big thing from from before the whole legion announcement is that i want to see uh more sci-fi more more even integration of the game it's obviously i'm not sure how much of that we're going to be able to get from uh from dust but it is very important to me that we that we keep the dust community as well supported as possible um you know, I'm excited about Legion, but that's the the big thing is is that um, the the community is what makes up the game, and that's on the PlayStation Three. Um, so the big thing is that I have a I have a, a degree in game development, and I have uh, I work in the IT field, and so I have a, lo a very much the the practical background for for a lot of of uh, kind of phrasing what players want and and want to see in in the context of what you can do with the Unreal Engine, which I'm fairly familiar with as well. And um, the software development life cycle and how a company like CCP is working in the background. Awesome. I really appreciate that. Okay. And what we're going to do is we'll move down to Pokey Draven next. Uh, I'm Pokey Draven, uh, CEO of OSG Planetary Operations, uh, running for CPM. Um, I'm, I like to think of myself as kind of the, the jack of all trades. I have a lot of experience in all different game modes, different roles, different suits, weapons, just a little of everything. I've got a really good idea of uh, how everything works, and I'm not an expert in anything per se, but uh, I can have a conversation with just about anyone on any topic. So, you know, when an issue comes up, I can see it from a lot of different angles, and one of those is probably going to be yours. So, you know, if you're looking for someone who can, you know, know what they're talking about, maybe not to the, the, the most in-depth degree, but enough to actually have a conversation. I know to go and talk to those who do have that in-depth expert opinion, and I can also tell when they're full of shit or when they actually know what they're talking about. So, you know, if you want kind of a, a generalist uh, CPM guy who works well with others, has a good idea about a, a wide range of stuff in the game, you know, I'm your guy. So, you know, vote for me. Cool. All right. Thanks. Uh, and we're going to go with Zatara next. Um, hey guys, my name is uh, Zatara Rat. Um, if you know, have never heard of me, I'm the CEO of Fatal Lab Solution. Um, I have done uh, a lot of work in the competitive um, side of the game in Planetary Conquest. Been there for a long time as a member of Team Players um, and a few other corporations, Pink Fluffy Bounty Hunters. Um, I am running for CPM um, to make sure that the competitive side of the community is represented well. Um, I know for, you know, from personal experience that balancing the game, um, beginning at the top is important. Um, and that this trickles down, um, when we balance for standard versus proto gear. Um, I'm going to be an advocate for the entire community. However, I will, will make sure and continue to make sure that I, um, gather feedback from across the spectrum and try vehemently to, um, make sure that the issues that the community wants brought forward are brought forward. Cool. All right. Uh, Jackal, you're up, brother. Hey, I'm the Black Jackal, and I am running for CPM to make Dust, aka Dust514 or Legion, depending on which way CCP falls, to be the one of, a top game even without the EVE support. I want Dust to be a game I can proudly say, hey, I play Dust because it's a good game. It may never be the MMO uh, that we want it to be, 
it would, it would be great if it would be. It may never be there, though. But I want to make it equal to any other game in shoot em in the face content. I want I want to be able to shoot with the best of them. Uh, my focus is on community tools and development tools, uh, non-numerical balances. So I want new maps rather than t uh, number tweaks, stuff like that. And I, you know, as uh, most people who know my posts on the forum, if you haven't seen them, go check them out. I dream big, but I know that I know my feet are still planted firmly on the ground. So I know what I can achieve. I know how much I can push, but I always have that big picture, that big ideal in mind. So I'm always striving to reach that. Awesome. And Delt. Hey, I'm uh, Marcel Elliott Delt, uh, director of Military Sand Shoes. And uh, I won't promise you in the possible, in the impossible. I'm a realist and promise you this. I will, to the best of my abilities, act as the community's voice to CCP and CCP's voice to the community when needed. I understand the time needed to do this, and I have that time. I'm a player just like the rest of you, and I want the best for this game and the community. I have worked before with NDAs, and I have worked as a tester on a released game for Turbine. Good deal. All right, Iron Wolf Saber. This is Iron Wolf Saber. I'm a CPM1, CPM1 candidate, and I basically want to continue the progress and efforts of CPM0 and making sure that CPM becomes a legitimate uh, organization for, for the community to use to communicate their concerns to CCP, as well as to ensure that CPM can continue to provide the advocacy that CCP needs for its development of the, um, either Dust or Legion, so that um, there shouldn't be any more bad decisions being made in the dark, well, well in public, and there should be um, much more um, communication from CCP to the, to the um, community directly. Good deal. And uh, Appia? All right, Appia Vivia for CPM1. Um, I'd say my, my strengths happen to be that I have multiple characters and I've been playing a long time, so I've accumulated just way too much SP. Um, that means I have the ability to specialize into every single role in the game. I'm familiar with every suit and every weapon and every module, every vehicle. I've used everything myself in planetary conquest battles, um, from being an HMG to forge gun to sniper to shotgun scout to just your standard assault, support logi, slayer logi. Um, if you're looking for somebody that knows the game backward and forth, that's me. I'm also meticulous with data collection. Um, I make charts and graphs for myself and I share them with other people. And um, really would like people to uh, check out Vote Match and uh, Bim Havoc's latest um, YouTube video for more details. Okay, good deal. And uh, we do have somebody new that's joining, joining us to the uh, correction. Somebody new joining us here on the show. Uh, We've got a gentleman by the name of Sir Manboy that we're going to let do an intro, and uh, then he'll get a, a second to soapbox. So if you don't mind, uh, can you go ahead and give us a quick intro, let everybody know who you are? Sure, Jason. Uh, this is Sir Manboy, uh, director of uh, Molon Labe. Um, I've been with the Corp for over a year. Prior to Molon Labe, I was a director at a Planetary Response Organization. And uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, I've been enjoying the show, listening to uh, some episodes now the last few weeks. Um, and of course, it's one of those things that helps me fill my, uh, my, my, or I should say, scratch my itch for dust. Um, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, I'm here, and uh, I'm excited about this race. I think I got in a bit late because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of learning the dust politics side of all of this, but I, I love the game. I love the community. I especially love my corp. Um, made some really great friends and established some um, awesome relationships uh, thanks to this game and, and prior to this game, thanks to MAG. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, cool. Uh, th that's great. And what we'd like to do, since this is your first time on the show, sure. Um, you know, normally what we do is uh, when a candidate comes on, we pitch them a couple questions and just kind of let them uh, go for a few minutes, kind of talk a little bit, a bit more about what they're looking for out of their time in the CPM or why people should vote for them. And, and at least for me, more like, why are you running? Like, why are you choosing to run? So if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is like literally just start off with that. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself personally and why you are personally running for the CPM? Sure. Um, I am a uh, 
school teacher by profession. I'm a high school social studies teacher in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, I teach uh, AP macroeconomics uh, and global studies. Um, the reason why I, I want to be in the CPM is because I, I absolutely have, have fallen in love with this game. It's it's um, not perfect, but I think the potential is, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's without borders. I mean, this is a game, while it hasn't lived up to all its expectations, it, it's attached to the EVE universe. I think the EVE universe is incredibly fascinating. Um, I think if this game becomes the FPS version of EVE, uh, it's going to it's going to knock everybody's socks off. And, and while it's not there yet, um, I think the potential will be there down the road. If not in this iteration of the game, which is Dust 514, uh, then certainly in Legion. Um, the, the kinds of things that I care about most in this game are community. Uh, I love my community in Mullen Lobby. I loved my prior community in, in the form of planetary response organization. Uh, when I was in MAG, I loved the professionals, which was uh the the corp i was with in that game and i really my focus is on community building uh looking out for the little guy looking out for these large corps of average players uh like your sub dreadits your uh faction warfare armies your your molon lobbies your corps that are out there truly trying to build these communities trying to make this game very inclusive uh, and I want to see those kinds of corpse rewarded in this game through the game mechanics, through game modes, um, so that they can be, uh, you know, enfranchised. And I think currently they are not in the current form of the game. I think large corps of average players are disenfranchised. Size is not a component in this game um, that pays uh, many dividends. And I'd like to see that change because I think those kinds of corps are the ones that are the backbone of this community and that are going to grow this community and make this game better and make this game ultimately a success at some point. Uh, that's that's a pretty interesting take. I really like where you're, you're coming from this, uh, essentially putting the community first. Uh, one of the things a lot of folks uh, have often wondered about the CPM is like, what is the role of the CPM? Uh, and I think you, you've started to kind of segue way into that really nicely. So I'd kind of like to, to tee that up with you is from what you've seen of the CPM zero and in what you would expect your role to be in the CPM one, what, what do you think is the value add of the CPM uh, based on the current state of dust and the, the uncertainty with Legion since that is not actually a green light game yet? Well, I think the value of the CPM uh, is is to basically have your ear in both directions. Uh, it's to it's to interact with uh, developers. It's to uh, interact with the community. It's to bridge that gap in many ways uh, to make sure that the community's uh, wishes are being heard. To to try to you know to what extent you can through the uh, non disclosure agreement allow the community to understand what the devs are working on. Um, I think that's a, a big part of it. Uh, with Legion coming up, um, you know, I still want to see Dust um, reach whatever potential it can in its current form. I know that's going to be limited in this uh, sort of Ratati age of Dust. He's doing a fantastic job, by the way. But I think he's sort of laid down um, the, the law, so to speak, about where this game uh, is and what we can hope to see from it going forward. Um, that doesn't mean it can't get better. That doesn't mean that there can't be some realistic uh, and positive changes that can make the game better for the average player. And again, that's my focus. I'm really sort of the person who wants to step up and speak for the average player, to speak for uh, the, the corps that are really trying to build this community up. And um, that's that's where my focus is going to continue to lie in Dust and, and, of course, in the future in Legion. And I'm hoping with Legion that we finally get some of these tools um, that will truly allow these, you know, community building corps to reach the level of success they deserve. Because I, because again, I feel that they are the ones that are going to carry this game, um, you know, onward into the future. Okay, uh, th that, that's a that's a very succinct take on it, and uh, I really appreciate the clarity there. Um, and that's one of the things that that we've often talked about either here on the show or or in a lot of different forms, even just squatting in game is sort of what is it, you know, kind of the what does it mean now and uh, where are we all going to go? Because like a lot of you, you know, there's a big kernel of the game that came over from Mag, uh, and what you see is probably 
uh, if this if this the community can be sustained over time through dust that is a fantastic seed package that will go into legion uh, and it's unfortunate that a lot of people have left and particularly a lot of uh, old-time vets but i think taking the approach that you and several of the other candidates are of really trying to not just uh, help the community to survive, but really help it thrive and, and, and go into something more than a, just a sustainment mode. That can be a really powerful thing. So uh, now in, in terms of a little bit of, you know, specifics about what you might like to see in dust, uh, what are one or two kind of things that you really, really would like to see in one of the upcoming hotfix uh, sets that Rotati's putting out? Like say you, you had direct input on, you know, hotfix Charlie or hotfix Delta. What are, just a couple things that you really, really think uh, should be moved to the top of the list. And if you could give me one thing, uh, if, if you were allowed to work on one thing with the Legion uh, team on Legion devs, like what's one facet or one aspect of Legion that you would really, really like to sink, sink your teeth into? Sure. Yeah, thanks for that question, Jason. Uh, I think with um, Dust in its current form, uh, you know, I, I think some of the realistic and positive changes that you could try to enact is, is to one, try to limit or um, in some way mitigate this wealth gap that we currently have in the game. Uh, I think if you could up ISK payouts, if you could up LP payouts, um, if you could also, you know, I think one of my favorite proposals out right now is Kajihoshi's uh, medium frame proposal. If you could up ISK payouts, make basic and medium frame suits more viable, especially in the medium frames, um, or excuse me, basic and advanced suits, uh, especially with re regard to medium frames, more viable. Um, if you could somehow close that gap a little bit with what we can currently do with Dust, I think that would be important. Another thing I'd like to see is PC continue to be tinkered with in such a way that um, these corps that perhaps don't have these elite rosters where they can use their size through attacks. And this would require changes of timers and changes of the prices of uh, clones, but do something to allow them to get in the game and to pressure smaller, more inclusive corps. Cause again, I would love to see this game factor in size and community building in a way that it hasn't done before. And with respect to Legion going forward, it's something that I have always wanted. And this is, this is coming from someone who played mag, who loved the mag and who fell in love with mag mostly because of this reason. I am dying to see a team deploy system in Legion. And I don't think it's going to happen in dust obviously, because that's just too ambitious. Uh, given the current uh, constraints, but I think for Legion, that has got to be a game mode that they got to give us because nothing allows a corp, and really it should be alliance-wide too, nothing allows people to come together more than, than team to play. You get to know your personnel, you get to play with them often, you get to build chemistry, you get to enjoy success together, uh, you learn a lot about each other's play styles. It's a fantastic game mode. Mag had it, and Mag had a lot of limitations, but that is something that Mag did really well. And it is something that truly brings people together, and I, I would just love to see that in Legion. I hope they, they absolutely make that a focus. Awesome, man. That, that, I, I really like what you're hitting on right there. Uh, the, you, you bring up a lot of really good points right there, and I think you've got some guys in the room that could probably riff on that with you in terms of how you can balance things with the suits back and forth. And maybe we can get into that a little bit later in the uh, in the game. Uh, I do I do want to give you a quick bump on that one in reference team deploy. That's huge. And the ability to use uh, your quantity as a quality, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, since, since mass, in a, you know, that is actually something that you should be able to use. And that's one of the beefs that a lot of the smaller corps or, you know, as you said, like large corps with, you know, probably a more distributed skill base have is, is that uh, when you effectively can have 20 dudes that can control large chunks of the map, that's a, you know, that, that's a tough thing uh, for them to overcome. You don't have a mechanic like an Eve where you can blot out the sky with, you know, frigates or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's a, I, I really like what you're saying. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, and I think I've got one more question for you, sure. uh, just to kind of tee up. When you leave, let, now let's assume you get elected here. So, like, fast forward a year in the future, when you leave the CPM, what do you want people to say about you as a CPM member when you're leaving? Um, the only thing I want them to say about me is what I was able to accomplish. What my, I want my legacy not to be about my personality, not to be about. 
um, you know, how it made me maybe a more notorious member of the community or anything like that. I want them to concentrate on what it is I was able to produce. Um, and I want them, if they do say anything about me, to say that this is somebody who clearly has a passion for the game, who gave it his all, and hopefully um, the results of his efforts were positive uh, and brought some some good things to the game. Or at the very least, um, he was um, a part of a CPM um, that was able to bring some some great things to the game. So that's the kind of thing I want them to say about me. I don't want my personality to be known. I don't want people to, to throw my name around, you know, as, like somebody who, you know, who uh, is a, uh, was a crazy form warrior or who has these really, you know, super strong opinions and, you know, tries to bully people in conversations and get his way that way. I just want people to say, hey, that's Sir Man Boy. He was a part of a really successful CPM that got a lot of great things done for the game. And that's that would be the best thing that people could say about me. I think, you know, if, if I were to serve. Cool. All right. Now I, I've got to ask, because we occasionally do this with everybody that comes in the show. Can you tell me a little bit about where the Sir Man Boy came from? Because I, I was a little intimidated <laughs> when I first heard that. Uh, it's really not that great of a story, to be honest with you. When I got my PlayStation 3 back in, I don't know, 2007 or 2008, whatever it was, I was totally new to um, – online gaming and I never had a gamer tag before and I everything that was coming to my mind at the time when I was putting the name when I was trying to put the name together just didn't sound interesting to me um, so I just thought okay well what could I what could I make my name that would just make me laugh and would make other people laugh if they saw it? And, and that's really all there is to the name it, it's it's essentially three words um, back to back to back that all virtually mean the same thing. Sir, man, boy, they're all three, three letter words. Um, and that just sounds ridiculous when you put it together. So, um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I get that question a lot. Uh, people, you know, have their ideas about where my name may have came from, but that's really all there is to it. It was a name that struck me as being kind of hilarious and it made me laugh out loud at the time. And I went with it. Okay. I, I'm going to. I'm pretty sure I could bring Hinox in here and he could like have some fun with that, but we'll, we'll oh, save that for another show. <laughs> yeah, he would have some fun with it. In fact, he, he probably has too much fun already. So uh, Fair enough. All right. Um, I, I really appreciate the impromptu uh, candidate interview right there, but but it, what we found is it's a really good way to, to lead off when you have a new guy coming in to actually kind of let the audience know a little bit about him. That way sure. you can kind of give some context when you guys are, you know, uh, jamming back and forth later in the show. Um, and, and real I, quick, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. I was just gonna, and, I, and I, if we're gonna continue, that's fine. But I just wanted to say, you know, again, thank you for having me on, and I want to thank all the other candidates for also allowing me to come on tonight and sort of fill some space. Uh, it's been fun interacting with you guys on the Skype channels and in other areas. Um, I don't know a lot of you really well yet, but uh, so far so good. I've really enjoyed uh, my interactions with you. Uh, via text chat at this point. So just wanted to say that, but go ahead, Jason. Sorry about interrupting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no problem, brother. Um, real quick, um, Iron Wolf Sabre, I don't, I think we skipped over you before we hit Sir Man Boy. Uh, if you want to go ahead and, and give your last minute pitch. You already, you already got me. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, awesome. Sorry, I had me, had me totally bamboozled that we like hosed you and skipped right over you. Sorry about that. Oh, actually, Soraya, you did actually get a question uh, on the Skype channel. Did you see that? I, I did see that. So, let's go ahead and ask it. By all means, feel free. Waffles or pancakes? Waffles. Word. Okay. All right, Hinox, your your question has been served. See, that's that's customer feedback right there. The listener pipes <laughs> up. We immediately ask the question to the targeted person. Answer is answer is forthcoming, and there we go. We're it, it, we're it, it's a beautiful thing. It's like a circle of life, little thing there. So it better not be Belgian waffles. Oh. Oh goodness gracious. So, so what, what I'd like to do is literally just kind of kick a couple ideas around to the folks and uh, get your takes on things uh, just as a group and literally just a little bit more of a free play thing. And I'll just kind of keep the conversation moving a little bit. But I think everybody in the channel, uh, all the candidates that to my knowledge actually accessed the vote match system that was put up, which and you know, kudos to Denny Fleetfoot for trying to prod some folks on the Eve side to get that stood up and D. Drill and those guys, they did a great job of getting uh, the CPM vote matchup, which is a, a long tradition in the EVE community. And for those of you that haven't seen it, I highly recommend you go down to the council chamber, council chamber part of the forums uh, on the Dust514 forums 
and you'll see something called reference vote match. Well, what that is, is effectively uh, it is a way where all the different candidates go and they, they have a fairly exhaustive uh, set of questionnaires that they go through where they rate different topics or or questions by importance of how important that they think that topic or that agenda item is, and then they actually supply an answer, of like how they would approach something, how, if they think something is more important than others in terms of balance or this or that or the other. And so all the candidates fill that out. And then you, as one of the voting community members, you go onto the website and essentially do the same thing. And what it does, it dials in uh, all the different scores of the candidates and where they place relative importance on different questions. And it uh, compares it to where yours is. And then it gives you essentially a rank order of, you know, in terms of percentile, like 99 percentile down to zero, of how closely different candidates at least have answered uh, the questions, how, you know, how closely they answered them to you. It's a really useful little tool. And one of the things that you can also do that a lot of people don't know is when it shows you the final score and all, you know, 19 or 20 candidates that filled it out, you can hover over the different answers and it kind of gives you like a color coded of sort of like how hot or cold they are compared to you and, and your answers. But when you hover over all the, all the little colored blocks, it actually gives you a text block, uh, sort of the essay format of how every candidate answered those questions. Um, I would also love to, like to give out a quick shout out to Aon Amadi, who's not on with us tonight. He's a CPM1 candidate. Really, really stand up dude. He actually uh, produced a neat little pie chart that showed how the different uh, candidates, not by name, but like as a group, what their variances were. And you that could really, really see. That really, really interesting. It, it was. You could really see where certain questions, the, the vast majority of the candidates were really dialed into. Then you had some other ones where you had. One, like a, almost like a binary, like a you know a black and white answer, uh, with very few sort of uh, out of tolerance answers, and occasionally I think there was like two or three of them where the answers were truly distributed almost equally across the pie chart. So again, it's a really interesting tool. It does not substitute for you as a player going on and checking out all the different forums or perhaps asking people for recommendations or maybe, you know, dare I say, just finding these guys and squatting up with them or shooting them a note and talking to them, which I highly recommend. So what I want, want to do is just kind of open it up and just ask the candidates, what did you guys think about the vote match system? Did it surprise you? Do you think it's useful? Uh, and is it something that you want to see, can, you know, carried on throughout uh, subsequent CPM1 elections? And I'll kind of open the floor up to that. Personally, I loved it. Um, I just I went on there. I did my thing. Like as soon as um, Daedra or what his name gave me the the mail and the the password to get in. Um, right when he sent out a mail saying, "Hey guys, it's up," or you know there were posts on the forums for it. I I went on. I did two tests. I did one. I chose the worst choices I could think of and saw who scored the highest on that. And then I did um, my my best results, and I was really surprised by the answers I got. There's a lot of people that come off as really charismatic, some people that have come off as the opposite, and it was really nice to, to see the difference there and then seeing people write stuff out. I really hope it gets it's continued for the next CPM. I feel that the vote match is a very wonderful tool for our voters to be using to help guide their votes. Not to determine the votes, but if you were to look in the context of why certain candidates picked their answers, it brings you so much more insight to what, to how they value things in the game and how those values compare to yours, which can then truly help you find a candidate that's perfect for you. I hope that this um, vote match can be better refined for the future because there were quite a few um, problems trying to get the answers, for, say, for the candidates. But um, hopefully in the future we can uh, we'll have more time to get all these questions put together, um, get it more um, streamlined, and hopefully um, get better better questions for next go around. Yeah, I, I mean I thought it was pretty crazy as you know as I did the the questionnaire and I was actually very very surprised um, when I took the survey myself to see see where everybody you know everybody went and how it compared. Um, I actually think I managed to be an extremely outlier. <laughs> for some reason is I think the closest person to me was like 40% away. Um, but, uh, you know, and not the candidates I expected either, but the, the, you know, the thing, the thing is, it is a very interesting, particularly if you read the, uh, the additional notes is when you're looking at the, when you're looking at the results, um, 
if you hover over a particular box that in the grid that aligns with a particular person's response to a particular question, um, they have the ability to add comments. And I think the biggest thing is to, to see what they had to say about the topic more than just the, the actual vote itself. But the really interesting thing to me is that, you know, we've had all these campaign threads and there's all these different people that go ask questions. And there's some people like, um, uh, Jason, especially who ask, you know, consistent questions of every candidate, but, you know, a lot of times, it, you know, different candidates get different attention or different activity or different people asking them questions. Whereas the vote match, you get the exact same questions asked to every candidate. And so you can see how they all um, react differently to the exact same situation. Well, it's also interesting for me because um, going through a lot of the questions, they're, they're multiple choice questions when we, when we do our, our fill out our form. And on a lot of the questions, I was not really satisfied with any of the answers. So again, I'd stress to people, make sure you read the, the description or the rather the explanation that, that people write up. Because I mean, at least for me personally, I, I would give an answer, but it I, I kind of needed to validate it a little bit and say, well, this is the closest to how I feel, but you know, check out what I'm what I'm actually saying because uh, when someone asks a question in your thread, uh, like a CPM form, you kind of have a chance to to put it in your own words. Where with a multiple choice question, you're forced to pick you know one of four or five six answers, and that may not be exactly how they feel. So I do encourage people go to the vote match. It's a really cool tool, but make sure you really read into what people actually said about their answers, and don't set that as your only means to you know p pick your candidates. I'd go through, read their threads. You you know, listen to podcasts, you know, on Biomass or other podcasts people have appeared on and, and really get a feel for the person because it's not just necessarily the issues. You want to make sure you got people that are, you know, going to be humble. They're going to be representing you. They're going to work well with others. So the issues are, of course, the main priority, but make sure that's not the only thing you're looking at when you're, when you're uh, selecting your votes. And some of those questions were like really hard. Like, I mean, one of the things I noticed was a tendency. Um, there are a couple questions that involve drop ship balance and they they it referred to drop ships and assault drop ships uh you know next to each other as as part of the same question and you know in that case for example i think they actually play out very very differently in in terms of uh you know balance concerns or anything else and so to that degree i'm kind of you know i was kind of iffy on how how to answer a question like that um there was there was one question, in fact, um, that w was revised very quickly into it, where there simply wasn't a good option uh, on the original format of the question, and and at all. And sometimes it was just it was really a stretch to to try and shoehorn you know your your feelings on the game, um, you know, and and credit given to the people who assembled the questions and stuff. But um, you know, the person who did do the the final vetting is not uh, is not actually a dust player. But um, I think it, it was an excellent job for 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 that taking that into account. Yeah, uh, I mean, you, were, okay, you can go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah, uh, I had a quick I had a quick question because uh, I I actually helped out with some of the initial screening of the questions. Uh, I've helped Deidre out with that a little bit, and and. and let me let me be very clear. Um, I posted up on the forums a couple of times about it, talked to some folks about it, and and I had voiced a concern that that a CPM one candidate, D Denny Fleetfoot, i.e. Caval Longstride, was uh, was involved in the in the picking of the questions. Now let me be clear. Uh, it was not so much that I was poking it at at, uh, at Denny, telling people that uh, that I didn't trust his ability to to be fair. Uh, my concern was more along the lines of I didn't think any CPM1 candidate should be involved in selecting those questions, mostly to keep everything totally above board uh, and, and to provide the trolls as little food as possible uh, during the election or post the election. Um, you know, and the other thing is because, the, and Soraya is right, the folks that actually run the vote match site, not one of them play not one of them played dust. Well, I take that back. I think one of them does, but, but Deidre, the lead, does not. So it, it was kind of interesting going through that. And they ultimately are the ones that pick the questions. Now, I provided feedback on which questions I thought were relevant or which ones uh, were, were probably legit. So one of the things I was kind of interested to hear from the candidates, were, do you feel that the slate of questions uh, – were for the most part relevant to you as CPM one candidates and maybe more to the point, if you weren't running, would they be relevant to you as a player to, to learn more uh, about the actual candidates? 
Yeah, I was well, I was going to bring that up with uh what I was going to say about the vote action site. I think uh it's a good start for it for the uh, CPM, but I think uh you need to uh they need to include a bit larger variety of questions in there for the uh, uh survey. And uh the other thing is I think it's a great resource for uh a lot of the candidates that aren't so vocal, so people can actually get to uh, see what they're about at least in a small part. I have to echo that sentiment. Uh, it, it it addressed all of the uh, the issues we're having right now in in the uh, see, in the game itself. As a player, you could see you know sort of dropships being too powerful, stuff like that. All those HAV balances, that sort of stuff. You know, uh, it represented the issues now, but it didn't have a lot of uh, far-reaching questions because the CPM term isn't just the immediate. It's not like you're voted in for a month and then once everything's done, you you're out. It's a matter of it's a it's a well, we're not, we're not sure how long this is going to be, but generally a year-long commitment. So in that whole year, you've got to have some more longer planned out uh, ideals and questions as well as the immediates. That, that's actually a good point, Jackal. That one, one of the things I had I had hoped for was to see more of the questions that made their way in about, uh, like, conceptually, uh, how would CPM candidates handle uh, prioritization of things, or, or perhaps a little bit more about uh, their problem-solving skills in relation to uh, the council, CCP, and the players. And, and that's one of the big things that I would kind of offer is, uh, you know, again, from a guy that had like a small hand in kind of cycling through their questions, that's probably the one thing I wish we had made it in was a little bit more in terms of uh, the conceptual or the the longer looking questions, as opposed to kind of the in your face, you know, balance related kind of stuff. Um, and, and I actually wanted to see a little bit more in terms of uh, things that would differentiate the the candidates themselves, not just play styles. The ones I thought were actually some of the better questions were the ones where it talked a little about, or at least asked the uh, you guys, the candidates, about your specific play experiences so people could understand where you're coming from, how often you played, what your what your general experience was. And that, that actually helps me a lot because the reality is, even though I make a very pointed effort to go out and find most of you guys, and I think I've, I li- I think I've at least squatted with, uh, I would say, 14 of the 20 candidates, uh, current candidates, I've at least squatted with you or spoken to you in comms. I, I think it's right at about 14. That took a fairly considerable amount of effort to, to go out and find find folks to do that. Um, it's just you know time zone mechanics or what have you. So I was really keenly interested in seeing more of the you know how do you differentiate the candidates and, and sort of give me context to the candidates. W- would that have been helpful? I'm just curious. What do you guys think? Well, well, the the vote match site did a did a lot to differentiate candidates. It it does because it's a it gives um a, a, an almost black or white view. Of um of the different things, someone might prioritise something else over over another person. It doesn't mean they both don't both both don't want it, but it it gives you that variance that you know I I may prioritise community tools over uh, social aspects or over other things like that. It that's the way it works. Um, it very it it just didn't do it so much in the long term as as you would expect. Yeah, I think you're real spot on with the, the idea that we need more questions that were kind of uh, further reaching and, and more of a, you know, what are you thinking in the, in the medium to long term? Uh, I think that's that's really spot on. I, I, I actually took quite a bit of time to, to write some questions that were, were admittedly more focused on, on recent balance and, and whatnot. And I, I made a real effort to, to kind of have, have – um, you know, questions for every role and aspect of the game. And I was kind of disappointed to see that 80% of those didn't really make it in. I felt that the the questionnaire kind of avoided, well, not avoided, but missed on a lot of aspects of the game. I think a lot of players would care about that. I, mean, I personally would have liked to know what other people thought, you know, so I, a bit of a disappointment there. But again, this is the first run of this for Dust, so I, I can understand there's some, some hiccups. Fair enough. Anybody else? I found it to be a, an interesting tool. Uh, I think it speaks to the level of dedication and creativity in this community that things like that even exist and that players are you know, bringing things like that forward. Uh, it's my understanding that I believe this person is more Eve-oriented. 
But by far, uh, yeah, she yeah. doesn't play. Yeah, does Deidre doesn't even play Dust? Yeah, sure, sure. But I, I think that uh, just the fact that there are people like that in the Eve community and in the Dust community that put together these spreadsheets and these graphs and these amazing uh, in-depth proposals, I, you know, I think that's one of the greatest things I, I love about this community. Um, and again, it just that's just a, another extension of that. Um, the only thing that I fear uh, with something like Vote Match, and I think it's a, an excellent tool, and I think it should be a supplement for every voter who's trying to make their decision is that I hope voters um, don't reduce us uh, to a number, a match number, and then base their entire decision on that. I hope that they are digging deeper, that they are trying to find, um, you know, what makes each of us tick, you know, what our real focus is, uh, and, and that they are reading the forums and that they are getting to know us through, um, you know, media like this, like biomass and, and other and other ways too. So I, I, that's that's my only my only fear is that perhaps there are going to be some voters out there who, and I've seen it happen in real life on websites that are similar, um, you know, for actual politics and for, for you know, for voting, uh, you know, certainly local voting and state voting where people will look at it 30 minutes before they go to the voting booth and they'll be like, oh, well, it looks like I agree with this guy the most. So I hope that's not what's happening and I hope um, and I and I, I do have confidence in our community and that they are sophisticated enough to make a decision that it, that goes beyond a match number. But there might be some people out there who do not. That, that's a again, that's a that's a fair point. Like I kind of mentioned up front is that the vote match is a great tool. It is a really nifty way of getting a snapshot of a lot of different things from candidates. But in no way is it a real substitute to actually checking out the candidates yourself. You know, read their posts. I mean, some of the some of the folks actually have put a considerable amount of effort. I think Jackal has what's equivalent to maybe a, a multi-volume novel already on the on the forums now. Um, <laughs> but but what you can do is you can really get an insight on how articulate somebody is, how they think, um, and and you can learn a little bit about them based on how they write. And, and I can tell you, if you really want to get to know somebody, go squad with them. Go send them a note. Say, hey, look, I'd really like to get to know you better if you're going to be a player representative, you know, that I, I could vote for. I, to my knowledge, and again, you know, aside from people kind of deflecting off of obvious trolls, I don't, I know of very few instances where uh, players have been stiff armed by any of the CPM1 candidates, um, it, and and that's that's just my personal take on it. Uh, so I, I think that it, you know. Sherman Boy kind of hit it right. The, the community is actually a lot smarter than people think. Can be quite prickly and fairly toxic on occasion, but that's usually because they're very emotionally invested in the game and the community, and they do want the best for uh, you know for the game. So when you start seeing some of the trolling that goes on, it, it's it's not just that people don't have anything better to do. It's literally because they they are emotionally invested in the game, and quite a few of them are are a little bit bitter about how things. Uh, you know, have arrived at this point, which by the way, very understandable, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't move forward in a very positive manner. And one of the things I would like to kind of take a, a quick shout out for all of the candidates, uh, by and large, uh, every one of them has had a very positive tone to why, the, why they want to be, uh, on the CPM. Uh, and I really want to let you guys know, I appreciate that with, with very few exceptions. I truly believe that most, most of the candidates are 100% in it for the community and the game and not necessarily just themselves. I think there's a few outliers there, but uh, by and large, it's a really good group running. So I, what I'd kind of like to do is kind of open it up literally to a little bit of it, anything you guys want to talk about. There's a few things going on uh, that's happening with, you know, Ritati's kind of on a posting posting thread here right now or posting rant right now, but there's a lot of things going on that people are kind of curious about. We talked a lot about Hotfix Bravo and Hotfix Alpha and things like that, but one of the things I kind of wanted to a quick round the horn on from all you guys was, should they release Hotfix Charlie before you guys are installed or should they uh, simply accrue data and then use Hotfix Charlie as uh, sort of the first sort of ice breaking project uh, for you to work with the CCP team on. And I'd like to kind of open that up. And what do you guys think? I'm going to bar myself from answering this question because I know the answer to it. There's no, there's no right or wrong answer in this particular case, I don't think. I, I think they should release it beforehand because then, you know, you start fresh on the next hotfix with the new CPM compared to gathering data, making your conclusions already, and probably already consulting with the CPM itself as it, as it stands. 
you know, and then you've got someone else have dipping their hand in. Whereas if you separate them and make it so Charlie's released right before the new CPM takes office or something along those lines, um, then maybe you've got you know grounds for the CPM one to start working from the ground up on on uh, Hotfix Delta or whatever they are you do. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think if if, the, if it's ready to go or if it will be ready to go, don't make the players wait for it. I mean, there's really no point uh, if 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 they're going to get the update, then give them the update. They, they shouldn't have to wait simply because we're waiting for the logistics of pushing elections through and getting people oriented and whatnot. If it's good to go, then let's move forward and we'll work on Delta. Yeah, I have to completely agree with uh, both Pokey and uh, Jack on that one. I mean, why why hold up on the community for a, a hotfix like that? Good deal. Well, if you're all going to feel that way, then I feel that by the time we all get... um. By the time CP1 gets seated, we might be looking at Hoffix Charlie being the first one to get to touch. Well, not Charlie, Foxtrot. Oh. That's interesting. I mean, bear okay. in mind, so they're going to have the election, and then they have to figure out who, who's, who wins, and then they have to talk to all those people ahead of time, and, and then there's all the legal paperwork and, and the, the almighty um, non-disclosure agreement signing of Doom. Um, and, like, probably half a dozen other things and then there's the you know because you have to then get everyone into the correct channels and start the whole transition period with the the cpm zero people talking to the cpm one people about you know stuff that's going on and it's it's probably a pretty long process so you know fair enough fair enough by the way all you cpm one candidates get a twitter facebook and um a couple other accounts well, if you're not on Skype, then I'm definitely one of those two. That should be a fair statement. And I think most folk, well, if you're all on here, you're definitely all on Skype. I can tell you that. The uh, Quite a, a few of you are on Twitter, not a lot. That's actually a pretty, pretty popular medium uh, for the CCP folks and for a lot of the player base. So highly recommend that. I have a Twitter. I just dislike Twitter passionately because um, – I am I'm not jackal length, but I am a wordy person, and 140 characters just doesn't do it for me. No, I'm I'm a huge it, fan of me. that. By the way, <laughs> Any, anything that I can do to like constrain and make your life difficult, sir, I'm 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 an immensely a fan of. <laughs> I see my word of my word of um <laughs> my my uh, habit of making walls of text seems to be getting me some. T- <laughs> Well, I mean, in, in, in all fairness, like a lot of you, like pretty much everybody in here at some point or another, you, you have written something that is, you know, more than the 140 character text Twitter on the forums. And, and it's, uh, again, to, to a person, to a man and woman in here, it's been logical, very cogent, uh, and, and an incredibly articulate uh, statement or position or exposition on something that, that you've seen in there. So I, well, I don't I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. No, no, it's it's the the, the wall of text thing is a, is a playful playful jest. Um, uh, you know, I actually think Jackal has uh, some of the some of the best written communication skills I've seen in, in terms of uh, just just explaining things that other people just aren't really conveying well. No, that's fair. Um, so curious. Uh, we'll kind of move on to a couple of the more specific topics that, that they kicked around, um, or, or at least one of the things I've, I've been seeing in terms for Hot Fix Charlie. Well, there's a continued discussion about messing around with different light weapons and things like that. Uh, and there, there's sort of running into this long list of very small things. And I think a lot of the big, uh, the big pain points, Ritati's already eaten off the uh, Hot Fix Alpha and the Hot Fix Bravo piece. What are the, you know, what do you guys think are the most critical pain points that need to be addressed, or the most critical broken points that need to be addressed uh, in Hotfix Charlie? Facwar yeah. needs better rewards. Period. I gotta say, uh, maybe assault suits getting them a bit of a buff. <laughs> the the a assault bit? suit needs a to be looked at quite, quite a, a bit. bit. All right, not not just a bit. <laughs> assault suits need need yes, a lot of love. I think assault in general. Suit, does... I was just saying, I think in general, a lot of suits and roles are currently irrelevant, and they need to be made irrelevant because nothing should be 
not worth using. It should all but, have a purpose. But my number one Charlie wish list item remains uh, either either ISK or more or much more uh, loyalty points in in Fakwar. It needs to be more rewarding than pubs and people who can do well in Fakwar should not have a reason to go into pubs. It should it should be more financially viable for them to be in Fakwar so that they're not in the pub queue. Yeah, if I had I'd, ISK I'd for... add to that. Oh, yeah, Jack will um, go ahead. I'd, I'd, I'd add to that in uh, a full, a, a actual full uh, store of LP items. You know, we don't have things like the Kaldari commando suits and stuff like that in the LP store. Something like that would be brilliant to have all the the, the factional variants of all the suits we've got in racial parity uh, for infantry at the very least. You know, having that sort of uh, across the board thing would be good. I went to buy some prototype commando suits um i don't have the skills for them i can only buy the neo ones to actually get the proto versions and uh i'd rather have used the massive stores of caldai lp i've got stored up in order to purchase them i would like to see tanks revisited uh specifically um large blaster turrets small blaster turrets um railgun range considered revisited and um like a few bugs fixed like the militia railgun having extra shots compared to any other rail turret um on the large militia rail turret. Um, faction warfare needs to uh, ISK payouts across the board um, from from P, from sorry pubs and uh, faction warfare need to be implemented and adjusted. Um, assault suits need buffed, like completely revamped. Um, yeah, there's there's a tons of really nice things that need to be done. Yeah, real quick, just to, as a follow up, uh, w- when you say blaster turrets need to, like large blasters need to be re- revisited, and I thought you said railgun range. Can you can you kind of expound on that a little bit? So currently, like blasters, um, after like the third third shot that you r- rattle off, like their dispersion kicks in, and it's just really really difficult to shoot targets unless you're within, you know. I don't know, 10, 10, 10 meters or so. And so I, I feel like they have less, and I've read this a lot too on the forum. Zatar, are you still there? I think we lost him. Okay, well, whatever he was going to say, I'm sure was just in- incredibly awesome. Uh, but uh, that, that actually did strike me as something I was kind of, that's what I was kind of curious about. And I would like to kind of pick it up with, uh, with the rest of the folks, I reference uh, large blaster dispersion. Uh, we can wait till he pops back on hit the railgun and stuff. I think, but um, I, I actually I, I was gonna the follow up question is basically gonna ask him was I think it depends on the target you're shooting at, and if you're shooting at lone infantrymen, I think the dispersion works really well uh, in terms of suppressing you know you know killing them if they're stupid or staying uh, staying exposed for too long. And it sounds like against uh, tank-sized targets or dropship-sized targets, not, not that you really ever shoot at a dropship with a large blaster, but um, I, I think it's still quite viable. Uh, and that's just my, my sort of observation. And I'd kind of throw it out to the tankers in the room. What do you guys think? I, I've made this same argument um, multiple times with people, how the, the large blaster isn't designed to kill infantry anymore. It, it shouldn't be. Um it, it was designed God damn it. for. It was designed. <laughs> it was designed for to, to, as an a, as a close range AV and infantry suppression role. That was that was sort of the intention behind the large blaster. The idea of he, to get an anti infantry weapon was to then fit a small blaster. I, I, I think I believe I went over this for the last biomass episode. How multiple people in the tank should have multiple well, make it the tank multiple walls. Hey, yeah, sure. I I just like to uh, bring this up. Appia, his mic isn't working currently at the sec at the moment. Uh, she okay. wants to uh, she wants uh, the splash on small missiles to be reduced. Uh, that was her take on hot fix, Charlie. Okay, at least one point of it. So, so I, I think broadly we're talking about a, a lot of of uh, continued vehicle tweaks. Zatar, just your track, and before you like uh, abruptly went up to go get a coke or whatever it is you do, you know uh, the we were kind of talking about uh, your, your sort of the follow up I had for you for large blasters and rail range. The large blasters, I think you just came in on the end of it. And, and really, the question I wanted to ask you directly was: when you say that, are you are you saying in general, or do you mean against? Um, and he's gone again. Okay, this is what happens when you have thirteen year olds thirteen year olds on. Okay, so I'll transition Ooh, this back. That's mean. <laughs> that's mean. Hey man, I'm just saying. <laughs> we, we already figured out that Delt is the youngest one in the party, so. 
Well, if, okay. if, if, if I may on this, um, I think it's it's actually a pretty good philosophy, roughly, to say that large turrets are meant to kill large things and small turrets are meant to kill small things. So the fact that uh, large blasters are less effective against killing God infantry is not a bad thing. <laughs> um, it should be possible, but it shouldn't be very easy to do. It's, it's much like trying to kill infantry with a large railgun. It's not particularly easy to do, but it's much easier with a small railgun. So, uh, granted, some additional tweaks are probably necessary, but I think in general the concept is pretty solid. I missed everything. Zatar, just <laughs> talk fast, because you're going to DC again at some point. <laughs> I don't even know what did we catch anything okay. of what I was saying. Yep. Yep. Where here are we at? Okay, here here we go. All right. Large blasters, what's good and bad? Go. Uh large blasters. Um they have a uh after the third shot they suck balls. Um the dispersion kills their ability to do anything um unless you're trying to paint the broadside of a barn. They have we need CCP to give them some limited effectiveness versus infantry and their the fact that their range is just uh, worse than HMG is is absolutely unacceptable. The dispersion after the third shot is bad. The small blasters are supposed to be um, good against infantry, and they're not. They're terrible. They feel powerful, but they suck balls. Are you still there? Yes. Yep. Okay. And, and basically, um, just so you're tracking, what we all said was we we think it should should suck balls against infantry, but not against vehicles. So, are you telling me that you think it still sucks against vehicles? Um. You know what? Like I. I just don't know what the purpose of the book. I, I don't know, man. I, I think that CCP needs to come together with with an idea of exactly what the purpose of the blaster is. Because well, I, they, they did actually. They did actually. They said it's, it's for a close range anti vehicle and infantry suppression. Do you that feel like literally it, words it amount. Do you feel like it's balanced enough to give it an advantage versus the other two large blaster types in, serpa, in terms of DPS? In terms of DPS, yes. In terms of alpha damage, no. Can you I elaborate? Because you're a tanker, I'm not, right? I'm I'm just the the guy listening to all the feedback. Well, in in general, when when you come up against a, uh, for example, a rail tank in close quarters against a, um, a blast tank, if if you haven't got your bl your railgun preset at their angle, you know, re already ready to go in, in facing them, they can they can pretty much take you out fairly quickly at close range. Fair enough. The, the range might need a bit of a tweak. The dispersion over range might need a bit of a tweak so they can get their uh, optimal, which I believe is supposed to be around sixty meters. They're, they're like their full range is like a hundred and something meters, but their optimal is supposed to be about sixty. And yeah, they can be quite dispersive at that that level. So a little bit of a tweak there, but not so much that they become super effective against infantry again. I agree with you. I don't think they need to be in, uh, extremely good against infantry. When I say dispersion, the dispersion is, I mean, it does get a bit much, like, don't get me wrong, but the, the larger problem with dispersion is with the small blaster turrets, because they are absolutely worthless. They're terrible. It's, it's I, really... I actually agree on the small blaster. That's it's fair. Quite, quite it's so they are frustrating. And, and it's so add frustrating. To fact, and add to the fact that the, the reticle disappears. I don't know if it still does, because I haven't used blast, small blaster for a little while, but the reticle disappears when you're actually firing them. It, it doesn't disappear anymore. It doesn't but, disappear uh, anymore. No, I, I, obviously think, recently, I think but the that was funny. I think the way to fix the small blaster, if they kept the dispersion, uh, is to just up the damage a bit. I mean, I, I fly, I, I use them on uh, Incubus, and if I had just a little bit more damage, I think it'd be a lot more effective. I, I basically took the tag. I, I mean, because I'm, I'm at heart, I'm a pretty simple guy, you know, in terms of, you know, how do you solve these problems? It's it's very similar to what I've taken like real life or at work is like what's the simplest solution that I can come up with and to me uh, it sounds like we we all generally want the small blast return to be you know one of the premier anti infantry tools I think uh, I would recommend then that you basically just clone the stats off of the like tier HMG. Uh, and then drop that on the turret, <laughs> and that, that that was that was actually my you know the way I kind of approached it because to to me there's still few things in uh, in straight up infantry on infantry combat that is more effective than you know an HMG you know by design so you, you know and conceptually it sounds about right that you'd have like an HMG mounted on a vehicle and that's about the same size weapon that you'd have a heavy like a specially built drop suit. You know, to carry something that you know that beefed up. So, uh, again, that was that was my idea, but I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Small blasters definitely need a rework. And well, I think I the range, the, the range debuff on the rail, large railgun turrets was just an over nerf. I think they need to revisit that and uh, maybe come to a middle ground. Maybe the the previous range was too much, but right now I feel like it might be a, it might be constricting what the rail turret might be better served as doing, which is kind of like tank sniping. 
Yeah, I, I still I think the, the range nerf was was quite too heavy. You know, I think they brought it down to the same level as the missiles. You know, and the missiles are supposed to be the middle ground. And at the moment, they're actually a more effective long range option than the railgun in a lot of cases. Well, the thing I'm... is that the, the changes that they made to the railgun in Bravo were what they probably should have originally done instead of the range nerf. I, I think that with was the, the, the range new... nerf in Bravo? No, that was that was prior. Yeah, uh, that was I'm just prior. making sure. Yeah, no, in, in, in I think that they, cause they 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 buffed up the the heat cost per shot. So you can only get off about four shots now, I think, before it'll overheat. That's and what right. that what that forces you to do is you really got to stay at long range because you can't just roll up and point blank with a railgun like you used to, which in itself really helped the blaster become more of a, an anti vehicle weapon. Now that you've actually discouraged the use of railguns at close range, I think having them have the same range as missiles is probably a bit of an overkill. I think going back to the 600 meters is probably, again, too much. So, like like you said, I think a middle ground would be far more reasonable, especially with the, the most recent changes. Mind you, try, trying to hit things consistently at 300 meters with missiles is practically impossible. Oh, yeah, unless it's sitting still, but how often does that happen? All the time. I'm going well, to okay, how with... often does that happen against people who actually know what they're doing? Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a prolific missile tank guy my missiles were the first things i i maxed out on my tank and um you know aside from being practically worthless against infantry in a lot of cases unless you happen to get a direct hit um and being awesome against armor tanks when you catch them by surprise that's that's the only time you really get a chance to to sort of show off what missiles can actually do when it comes to um anti-shield tanks and stuff like that they are the worst turret if you if you're taking on um hardened gun logies and stuff like that uh, but trying to hit something at 300 meters has always been a pain in the ass since since they got retooled to the uh, the full auto. Even tapping tap fire to sort of reduce the recoil, it's still hard to consistently hit things at 300 meters um, and still get DPS out of it before they move off. Okay, fair enough. Uh, hey, uh, Iron Wolf, I think you were trying to get in, right, brother? Yeah, I was going to have to disagree with the uh, railgun range nerf because, uh, first off, I've still seen railguns being shot from a out of render distance, which is it's still a massive problem for any vehicle pilot. Is getting hit by something you cannot see. And then added the, added to the fact that the when the railgun hits you, it, it hits the damage indicator from all directions, so you are you're just wildly looking around for the railgun tank, and he's still deep in red lines on some of these really small ass maps. For example, Manus Peak still is like so goddamn small the two MCCs are kissing each other. I, I still have an opinion that uh, a lot of that sort of stuff is more about the the map than the actual railgun itself. In it tends to be more in PC. The maps are much larger, and um, and he's gone again. He's gonna be oh boy. I, I'm, I'm just going to assume that Hinox is trolling him. In fact, I think Hinox is trying to confirm that for me right now, that he's he's got a minion over there cutting the interwebs off and on on uh, Zatara's apartment. It's awesome. See, see this, this, is, this is like true multi-platform media for everybody in the listening audience. Not only can we troll digitally, but we have means to troll you live. So hi, highly, highly recommended there. So... <laughs> So before we, we diverge into a, uh, a deep dive on vehicle stuff that will leave a, a lot of us, you know, crawling through bar, barbed wire again, um, I did kind of want to ask, does anybody have any other items that were, uh, you know, specific to Hot Fix, Hot Fix Charlie that looks like they're brewing that you guys are interested in? A lot, a lot of talk, talk about uh, the drop suit frames, you know, and this is one I would personally like you guys to tee up a God little bit. God damn it. The uh, is the drop suit frames versus the different rules, and I know Pokey, you've done a lot of work on this, um, and, and I know several of the other candidates have kind of chimed in with you on it. So, by the way, Zotaro, since you've been gone again, we've already moved on from your topic, and we're starting something new. Dang uh, it! <laughs> so it just happens, brother. It's okay. Um, but what I would like to do is kind of open it up, you know, briefly. What you guys think we should do, uh, or at least by we. Uh, what I really mean is Royal We, i.e. CCP, what they should probably attempt to tackle in terms of suits uh, in one of the upcoming hot fixes. And, and again, I know you guys have talked a little bit about this in different CC, uh, CPM1 uh, candidate threads or actions, but some of you had some really novel approaches to it. Uh, and I'd, like I said, I'd just like to kind of you know throw the beach ball in the room and see what you guys come up with it. And I'd like to start off with Pokey, specifically because he's come up with um, some things for dust, but what he did, and I'd like him to talk a little bit about it, is 
he led into what he thinks uh, is a potential option for Legion in terms of you know, how do you expand out suit roles and things like that. So, uh, Pokey, if you, if you don't mind, can you kind of sort of tease this one up for everybody? Okay, well, basically, um, well, I think one thing that a lot of people can agree on is that the, the frame suits are largely uh, useless. They, the, they're they pretty much a, a straight downgrade compared to the specialty suits. There's zero reason to use them because the, the specialty suits are similar slot layouts, usually better resources, and obviously get the bonuses. So I think the first thing you need to kind of look at is what kind of bonuses can you give to the frame suits? Because like in EVE, even Tech 1 ships have bonuses. Um, now... To make them actually useful, I, I would like to see a system where we can actually have the frame suits reworked so they are a true, you know, general use uh, suit where you've got more options um, for what you can do with them. You maybe different slot layouts, maybe some more equipment, different tools and whatnot, but you're, you're lacking that specialty bonus. So, kind of the the, the key concept is, is that when you specialize, you need to give up something in order to gain something. So. I mean, just as a very rough example, you would give the medium frame uh, two equipment slots. And if you went down the assault route, uh, route, you would lose an equipment slot. And if you went to the lodging route, you would, you would gain an equipment slot but lose your sidearm. So it's kind of stuff like that where you, you can kind of build up and the deeper you specialize into that role, the more you give up. But you also gain that added benefit of you know, stuff that's very specific to that role. So more equipment, you know, or more damage output, stuff like that. Now, what I would kind of like to see is that right now you can unlock your specialty suit at level three of the frame suit. And that, that opens it up and you can, once you get, you know, medium suit three, you can start leveling Lodgy. And there is basically no reason to level four and five on that frame suit because you've already got your Lodgy suit. It's better than the frame suit. You're never going to go back to it. So I kind of like to see where you've got a bonus for your frame suit. So let's say, for example, it is a PGCP reduction to armor and shield modules. You know, it's a pretty broad, not very specialized bonus, but it's a pretty useful bonus. And then when you move into this, the, the Logi suit, that Logi suit picks up a bonus for every level of the frame suit, but it's specialized for that suit. So instead of getting a reduction to armor and, and shield modules, it is a reduction to the cost of, of equipment because that is kind of the Lodgy's thing, is that you're reducing the cost of the equipment. So it's a bigger bonus specifically for that specialty, but it's less broad. So you, you're, again, losing options to gain specialization in a very specific one. And I, I think we can actually pull that off with Dust. I don't know the exact mechanics of how the tagging system works. That's something I, I need to actually talk to a, a dev about or someone who's a little more knowledgeable on the exact mechanics and how that works. But I think this is something we can actually push forward for Dust. Now, moving forward more towards Legion, um, I know they kind of talked about they had like their basic suits, they had specialties, and then like an advanced specialty. And I think you kind of do some additional branching where previous suit bonuses are applied to deeper specialties, but again, it's more limited, it's more focused and specialized. So you're getting a bigger bonus for every level, but it's it's less general. So you still have a, a reason to level up and, and to skill into lower level skills because you're still getting a benefit from it, but it's going to be for your, your specialty. And kind of how this works is that you can, in some situations, you may want to stick with a lower, not lower tier, but a less specialized suit because the situation may require it. Like I kind of went with the fitting option because in some cases there may be a fit that you need to do where you need to have a medium suit that's got a sidearm, but two equipment slots. You can do that with a medium frame. You can't do that with a lodge or an assault. So it's, it's a little marginal, you know, it's probably not going to be useful for most situations, but I would like it to see where those frame suits can actually be useful in certain situations. So people are inclined to actually have them. They want to skill into them and they aren't totally pointless like they are now. I have a question for you, Pokey, on that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, it makes sense what you're saying for, like, say, a, uh, a medium frame with the assault and the logic. It's a happy <laughs> medium. But, uh, He's going the exact same way I was thinking. <laughs> Continue how, how, how would you do that for a, uh, a light frame suit where there is only one suit? There, there's no... There's nothing but a medium between, or even between uh, heavies and uh, commandos. Well, again, like I said, it's obviously you're picking one specialty over the other in terms of a medium. But for a, a scout, or a light rather, um, unfortunately we don't have that second specialty you can really go into. But I think you can still kind of make the suit more general purpose. Um, like I said, either with more equipment or, you know, different bonuses, different fitting bonuses. So it's it's not as easy to hammer out, but I think that you can give them more options because they don't get to have 
you know, the scanning bonuses and whatnot. So, um, I mean, I, I don't want to get too deep into exact details, but I mean, the example of having more equipment slots than a scout or having more fitting options, you know, you, there there's, needs to be some sort of advantage thinking, okay, well, I don't need scanning for this situation, so I want to give myself more advantages by, by going into a, a frame suit. Yeah, that was pretty much going to be my same question. I'd like to see it applied um, to something where it's not so clean, clean cut. I mean, obviously, it's easy to to think back on um, on the idea of you know having two a generalist suit having two equips or you know, and you've repeated that a few times. Oh, well, it could have you know more equips or more fitting capability or something like that. I I need to see it fleshed out for like heavy frames or light frames before I could feel like it was. Uh, it's able to be replicated on something where it feels different the each time you do it. You know, it's not just equips for each suit or fit, fit, you know, when you say fitting requirements, how would it be done specifically? But I think it's a very interesting concept and worthy of our time. And I think this is a strong, um, another strong example of how Pokey can look at things at a macro level and bring some new insight into things. Yeah, and to be clear, there, I actually have done a lot more in-depth work on it. I'm just not getting into, you know, the spreadsheets uh, beyond here the, on the yeah. air. Yeah, so beyond the scope but, of it. I'd love to sit down with you sometime, dude, and, and yeah, talk about it sure. more. Yeah, I, I just kind of need to get to a point where I'm a little more comfortable showing uh, a wider range of people, so just so my, my thoughts aren't totally off the wall. But, you know, like I said, that's, that's something I, I kind of want to push out this week, probably. So I'd love to get your guys' thoughts. I'll get it up on the forums, have people chime in. I've been kind of running around asking for feedback in various different focus groups, just to kind of get their thoughts on some of the finer details and putting it all together and, and then see what they all think. Yeah, I think we can all agree, though, that medium frames, um, I mean, all frames, frame suits are just pretty worthless um, unless you're just impatient and uh, you just want an easy way. Like, for example, I remember in the last, like, 1.7 before we got respects I had, um, I was just too lazy to skill up the assault suits. Um, so aside from, or one of the assault suits, so I just got Galente medium frame after I already had Galente um Lachi because I didn't feel like spending all the extra skill points to get Galente Assault Proto. But outside of that, you know, one example, um, which I haven't even done in, you know, in 1.8 now that I have 54 million skill points, it's not worth it. Um, I just wait. I, I don't think that you're right. I think you're you're hitting it spot on that medium frames just don't serve much of a purpose and should be um, brought back into a position or basically created into a new position where they offer us some benefit. Well, it's not just specific frames. I think we can agree that there's a lot of racial variants of various roles that, that are far less useful, uh, specifically speaking, like the Mimitar and the Amar Scout. They, they tend to fall behind, you know, the, the Kaldar and the Galente, and I think they, they kind of need to have their, their role hammered out a, a little more in detail so we can actually work on, on giving them bonuses and abilities that, that make sense and actually make them useful or as useful as the the Galente and Caldari scouts. I think it's just a matter of trying to make everything have a purpose, and it's it's a shitload of work. You know, it's it's a pain in the ass, but it's that kind of stuff that really needs to happen. Because I, I hate when I see something, people go, "Oh, don't use that. There's no point to that. It's 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 crappy." Well, there there shouldn't be. It, it, it's in the game. It should have a purpose. It should have a, a meaningful impact on the gameplay. And if it's if it's not having that impact, you need to give it the ability to do so. And I think that's one of the biggest undertakings is trying to figure out a way to to make each individual suit contribute to the meta in a sense. Um, because, I mean, there's just been, you know, there's every game that I've ever played, it sort of felt like I've gone in and, you know, and said, hey, you know, started playing and then gotten to a point where I hit my head against a wall. And um, somebody explained to me that, yeah, dude, you're you're using this. It's not really useful in competitive play. And it, it's it's disappointing, but, you know, like outside of League of Legends, I've I felt that way um, a lot about almost every game I've ever played, and it's something where if we manage to to balance all of the suits in a way that they all do individually contribute, and even in a larger scale, your medium frame idea, bringing them into a place where they contribute in competitive play, that would be huge and contribute to the replayability of Dust down the road. Well, it's especially important in in this sort of situation where people have spent a lot of time, SP, and money on going into a particular thing that they liked and then changes come in and suddenly they feel useless and it's like a waste and that's that's no that's not cool so we need to you know give people who have actually gone into these roles that they want to play these roles don't force them to play a different role just because the one they want is totally unviable I'm i will sorry, say I, you off. I i don't know any suit in particular that's that's like to the point where it's unviable in public matches it's more like for the most part you know because the way the public matches play out 
um, aside from you know not even getting into the complex conversation of the of the imbalance between the 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 huge differences where it should be closer together similarities between basic and proto gear um, I don't know there's just a there's like such a huge conversation here that's just waiting to happen I think I'm just going to end it here. Hey, uh, real yeah, quick, I, I did want to tee something up because uh, you know Appy is mics down, but she had an interesting, uh, an interesting thought, and, and I'll just I'll kind of read it to you, you know, from the chat channel, and just kind of get your guys' take on it, which I had not thought of it, you know, as I framed this for, her. I have not thought of this. Uh, I'm very used to Pokey's idea, but what she she laid out, I think, is is a, a very novel approach, which might be uh, an alternative way, probably a little bit more. Uh, not complex, but one that would require a little bit more, uh, you know, detailed work on it. But it's pretty interesting. So let me read this to you real quick and kind of get your guys' reaction. Okay, first she says that she totally disagrees with the pokey and he's bad and he should feel bad. But but let's get past that. She, she's done um, that before, so I'm fine. <laughs> no, it's okay. So we we all have. But but her approach is basically you get rid of the frame suits entirely and you start the SP climb. Uh, like with the assaults, for example. So instead of scaling into the med medium frame, you scale directly into the current assault. And then you have even more specialized versions branching off of that down the road. Um, what do you think about that? That's kind of more along the lines of, of what I was looking at for Legion, where you've got the specialty and then you've got a, an advanced specialty. So in that case, you'd be removing the frames and starting with the, the specialty and then in branching from there. And I, you know, I think that's fine too. I, I think that in either case, make the frames useful or get rid of them because I don't want them to be pointless if they're going to be in the game. I, I would prefer to make them useful, but I think what she has to say has also got a lot of merit. I just don't necessarily agree if that's the best approach. I don't I don't agree it's the best approach either because considering CCP has removed content and I'm still fine trying to get some of it back in, it's it's not easy. What what content are you referring to specifically? Uh the vehicle variants, the vehicle turret variants and some of the modules that they've been missing um since um they got nuked um last time. Yeah, that's a pretty big concern of a lot of players, and I think it's one that needs to be addressed. I think if the difference with the the choices are, you know, buff this into relevancy or make it have a purpose and remove it from game, I think players are very jaded and will choose. Please make it make it somehow useful and relevant. That's to be how well, well, it's, I get also, it's, it's also much easier for developers to justify um, making it useful because it's on their own server. It's actually doing something. It's not performing up to what they're expecting it to. It's much easier when things are still there. But if you remove them, they have they lose all context. Well, and we're in a development cycle right now with um, very limited resources, so removing stuff seems like a bit of a step backwards in light of that. Well, I'm, it is I'm personally if... for making something relevant over removing it, because removing it, obviously, in, in my opinion, I'm not sure exactly is the system they use, but seems like it would take more, because I, A, if you remove the frame suits, okay, you there's SP invested that they've had to build up to get to the particular suits, so you had to refund the SP. You had to remove the, remove the skills, you have to remove the. Um, you have to change the UI to reflect the skill skill removal, and then you have to sort of re-justify it. Or again, to me, that seems like a lot more work than say slapping a bonus onto uh, the frame suits or changing their slot layouts. I mean, if you've been paying attention to forums, uh, CCP Rotati just posted that he's wondering why these things were removed in the first place. So now he is going to have to go ask around in the studio and maybe to the community a bit. It's like, why are they gone now? At the same time, also, Appia's idea to make, you know, basically make the, the what we have right now as racial variants, like the um, the, ba the basic, in a sense, like she's saying, uh, you know, I want them, I want to have the racial variants that we have and then more specialized suits. Like in a way, like you're essentially just, you know, changing the problem from, oh, let's make medium frames this and then this the specialized. She's saying make these, these suits specialized and just make the other ones more specialized. It's essentially the same concept of, Having two separate different sets of suits, though, it basically an al an alternative version of um, Terror Side, which has been um been around for a while. <clears throat> well, I I, I mean, and again, it's sort of a disadvantage because because her her mic's down. The uh, I you know my personal opinion on that is I think her idea like literally is one that would have merit only in that I think we all agree that the basic frame suits right now truly don't serve a purpose other than an SP gate to get to something else. 
Uh, and you would have to, to significantly change the frame suits to make them relevant. Now, I, I think what she's proposing, really what all what everybody's proposing is a pretty significant change, particularly for dust based on the constraints that they're working on. Uh, but it's, it's not that, um, you know, not that far out there because, now correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I've not heard any hint that uh, CCPZ is looking at having a progression system, so, you know, that looks remotely like what we've got now where you would skill into something not useful in order to skill into something that's useful. It sounds like he wants a much flatter uh, system, which to, to a degree, at least, you know, at least, and again, this is totally at first glance. This is the first I've heard, I've heard Appy's idea is that uh, it, it sounds like she is closer to that flat system that Z is describing. Did, am I off on that? Or is, you know, does it, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, I think so. And I mean, conceptually, what she's suggesting is actually a really good idea. It's just a question of, are we talking purely conceptually, like macro level, what can we do in theory? Or are we talking, what are the development resources and the, <clears throat> excuse me, and the plausibilities for dust at, under the current development climate? Because if it's a thing for Legion, if it's just the concept, then that's great. That's something that I could really get behind. If it's a question of what are we doing to try and enhance dust right now with the resources on hand, then removing anything that's attached to an art asset or has already been developed because the stats are bad seems like a step backwards because we need to make all the content we have valuable and meaningful since we don't know when we'll be getting any more. Real quick, Cross, if you mind, uh, just throw a, a quickie intro, intro in since you kind of hot dropped in uh, you know, about 10 minutes ago. Okay, I'm Cross the Two. I'm from OSG, CPM1 candidate, and managed to get myself lost in the feedback forums and miss the earlier part of the podcast. <laughs> How very Iron Wolf of you. Um, but I, I would like to just put this out there. I don't know if this was clear enough when I said it before, but it feels like like conceptually the way she did, like it's being described is it's the same idea, just a matter of what bonuses are going where. Like both are saying, hey, one is going to have these sorts of bonuses, the other is going to be a more specialized and have and have trade offs. Like, I, am I missing something here? Or does it sound like the ideas are exactly the same? Essentially, what she's saying is the current specialty suits would become the new frame suits, and then you'd have subspecialties based off of that. Exactly. It's it's very similar. Which and is so why the I, only I don't difference really is disagree. You... It's just well, I mean, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily agree with with the concept, but I mean, with with, with this, the specifics of the proper concept. But I think they certainly have merit. Yeah, the, I mean, the only big difference I see is that you're saying it should be general, where she's saying it should be you know basically as as specialized as they already are. Right. That's, that's and, only... and then right. I'm saying make the frame suits more general, and then stick with the current specialties. She's saying start make the with the current the specialties, frame suits. and yeah. then make them more specialized. Which, which yep. again, I, I think I think is is a pretty solid idea. It's just kind of a matter of how you want to go about, yeah, you know, and, getting the end result. Just, just to, and again to kind of you know I'll I'll kind of I'll kind of cap this and we'll move on the. You know, my thought on it was, and, and again, not having really done any serious number crunching on it, but if you just consider the number of people in a given, like you, you play an entire weekend, how many dudes in frame suits do you really see running around ever? It, it's a pretty small number. Um, and that tells me that, you know, obviously the suit's undervalued or, or truly devalued to the point where it's not useful. Um, and I would, I would offer that to most players, the basic quote unquote specialized suits that we have now, those, those are your basic suits. And as far as I know, very few people touch the, the frames. I know a few people that, that will run uh, like the heavy frames as they're that they you know as they're growing into Sentinels, things like that. But those are few and far between. Yeah, it certainly does not help that there's a role in every one of the specialized suits right now that roll stomps all the basic frames. God damn it! it is Atar still here? Z, are you still? Yeah, here? I'm, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Why would I miss? Would oh, I no. miss this time? No, no, you're absolutely okay. It's good. Trust me, nobody said anything about you, like, at all bad. Okay. Wait, are we still talking about, like, different suits needing fixing in, uh, in, in Hotfix, Charlie? Because we kind of went off on this tangent at the macro level, but there are still a lot of interesting things that could be said on that topic. Yeah, no, absolutely. Go, go tee it up. We were just kind of funny with you right there. Um, so, right, we I think we can generally agree that heavy suits, um, their fittings, like, have way more flexibility than they probably need. Um, than they do need, like they, 
they have a lot of lot of fitting required like fitting um cpu and resources. pg yeah yeah resources thank you i'm roping for a word there and couldn't find it like on my advanced heavy suit um gal heavy i can i can fit all proto modules which is just crazy considering i run like double complex kin cats on it which are like a ridiculous 15 pg i think also at the same time mentioning those kin cats i think the pg i was talking with our kin and he mentioned to me that perhaps those need to be revisited and and balanced out a bit because 15 PG is just ridiculous for um, the the benefit that you get out of kin cats. It's it's just crazy. There, there's a lot of other things that I think could be said. That's sort of like a module thing, but um, I don't know. You guys have also spoken to me. I spoke with Koki last night about um, how some skills still like are one, three, and five, and they just give you an option, like give you an equipment. Specifically, we were talking about the uh, cloak. How it just that the actually skilling it doesn't give you a bonus um, innately so that I don't know there's just a lot of things outside of just the fact that assault suits generally need rebalanced the HMG needs looked at or at least the heavies effectiveness needs revisited um, and uh, I don't know what else do you guys think that seems pretty I spot want, on I uh, want go ahead Bill. bring that up is that about the uh, about the kin cats I find it I find it funny that it's easier to fit them on a Galante heavy than it is to fit them on a min scout which is embarrassing, right? And I was actually really encouraged. One of the things that I, I felt like the scout community did very well when they brought together that document um, that they had us all look at was that the min uh, was changed to a bonus that actually reduced the fitting requirements of kin cats. Um, I think that would be like a super, super relevant bonus for um, for ninjas if uh, if they're looking to sort of you know still give bonuses to modules to fitting modules and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I have to say with that that one, I I don't quite agree with just the Kincats. I think the min itself should uh, have a bonus to the fitting of all the uh, stamina, or not the stamina, all the biotics, uh, biotics. all the biotic mods. Yeah, the, yep, the yep. actual most recent I version I saw of that was uh, it was just a sort of bonus. I think to the the efficiency of all biotics in general, which I think is is pretty solid. Which oh, was... hopefully also would help you kind of distinguish away from the from getting the uh, Amar Scout the bio, like the stamina mods because I, I think that's a really weak bonus for the for the Amar Scout and I and I wish the Scout community it's, I wish we could come up with something more you know like different and effective. Well, I, I think let, let me let they... me bounce this off Go everyone ahead. here right now with the Amar Scout. I mean I, I brought this up in the thread, but I'm just I'm just wondering what anyone would think about uh, maybe uh, have their bonus be a reduction to. Uh, with armor plates and whatnot to uh, the speed uh, penalties. I, I think I would actually probably prefer, um, I kind of see Pharaoh scale as the light plates of, of infantry. And I think I'd rather see them get the bonus to the light plates rather than the reduction to the speed of the, the heavier plates, which I think are more suited for mediums and, and heavy frames. I, that's just my personal opinion. I'd like to see more and like have it explored more, like what the role of the Amar scout could be. I know like, um, Gimbal had posted in the past how he had some ideas about how it could be something other than, you know, a light assault, which is what generally a lot of people have said, like, oh, yeah, we should just make the Amar Scout a light assault. And I don't know necessarily that we should just always apply that concept just off the bat. I think it's worth um, just exploring what other options there might be that can make it different and unique. And I think that plate bonus might contribute to that idea that it's a light assault, making it because that that heavy plate bonus, I mean, obviously with with the lows that it has, it has the capacity to have a lot of armor. So um, this, is what, this is why I bring this up because I I have my views, but I want to see what everyone else wants to like, you know. Yeah, no, I hear you. It, it's an interesting dynamic because I, I kind of see, uh, particularly the Amar and the Minmatar suits, is almost kind of filling the middle ground uh, gap between the, the the frame sizes. Like uh, I've spoken to a lot of people that like to run Minmatar uh, Sentinel, and they say you don't run it like a Sentinel; you run it like an assault suit with a heavy machine gun. It's it's kind of this interesting middle ground. It's it's a light heavy, so it, it runs kind of like an assault. It's slower than an assault, but less health than heavy. And I think the Amar kind of fill the opposite role in that they kind of go up that tier. They have more HP. Uh, they're a bit slower, but they kind of fill that middle ground. I think it's kind of an interesting thing to look at. And speaking to a lot of scouts, they, they they've said that there's there's quite a demand for a. <laughs> a brick tank scout. I know people kind of freak out about that concept, but the Piss idea of a scout on that's that. <laughs> well, I, I think the, what, the difference being that you've got a, a scout with a lot of HP, but not 
the the scanning bonuses. They aren't stealthy. They aren't scanning, but they're they're a bit of a heavier, slower scout. But they aren't quite the assault suit. And I think there's a demand for that. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying that it should be, but I think people definitely wouldn't mind having a, a more of a tankier scout that's less on the intel and more on the direct combat. Because that is kind of the Amar philosophy that you've got a shitload of HP. You're just in there, just beating the shit out of things. And I, I think sticking to that that kind of racial theme isn't necessarily a bad thing there is a there is a guideline for having something like that it's called a a, a force recon um the idea being that you de- you determine enemy positions by firing on enemy positions or firing firing on enemy positions and then they were forcing them to either move or to return fire and that that's another way of recon in, in the first place so that's another role a scout can have if you make a make a scout that has a um that, that sort of purpose in mind you know it, that's not necessarily a bad thing um however you have to run the fine line between okay you have to be able to pitch it to the point where this this combat scout can yet provoke has, has enough power to provoke a reaction of some description but not enough power that it outplays assaults and heavies and commandos in the same role well, and that's part of why it's important to not have the assault role be defined by HP as much as by DPS. Because at some point, if you have the middle range frame, the assault role, the main combat frame that's in the center of balance, be defined by its regeneration and DHP, then you're going to have almost endemic imbalance between either the light or the heavy or both. You need to have the assault defined by something other than HP, or some role is always going to have excessive overlap with it. And the assault always has been meant to be that that front line attacking pressing force, and I think that means high damage, because you're you're going to have to fight through you know you have to beat through heavy suit HP since heavy suits are generally running the the defensive side of things. Well, and I actually submitted this question to the the vote match, and I, I know you probably all answered it. The asking that the commando is currently kind of a DPS, you know, a brawling sort of of role. Should the assault fill the same role or a different one? And I mean, my my personal answer was that they are in a way redundant, but since they are both there, the assault should fill a similar role of having the most DPS out of all of the suits of that of that frame making them, you know, better at killing simply because they've got better weapon support skills, they've got better uh, DPS and that sort of thing. That was my feeling. I think that uh, the commando suit would be better off being made as, as, as flexible as possible since you do have that two heavy weapons and I could see um, figuring out how to make it even just a little bit more um, versatile than it is now, um, whereas assault should be single-minded, focused, just damage. Just correcting you, two light weapons, not heavy. Ah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's pretty much my feeling as well. They, as far as role definitions, um, Rattati's already said that we're not going to see major overhauls like the removal of the commando or the assault getting two light weapons. And so working with the framework that we have, making sure that the assault has the most potential for optimized DPS off of a light weapon seems to be really the role that its overall nature and theme best gravitates towards. I'll I actually tend to disagree there. I'll actually tend to disagree a bit there. Um, the assault, yes, it's it's designed uh, it's designed around the philosophy originally as DPS, but I actually feel that the assault would be better off having a role that is more assault, I suppose. Yet doing damage is part of doing assault, but also um, a moderate between survival and movement speed and all that sort of stuff come into taking a point. That's where the assault really should come into a time where it should be designed around taking that point, whereas the commando at the moment is more a versatility thing and i'd rather see that reflected in bonuses well that's exactly what giving them the optimized light weapon damage does when you take a frame that is basically in the median of most stats and allow them to optimize for a light weapon you give them the versatility to take a point to break heavy defense because you can either apply range or you can apply aoe suppression so i I don't actually see how what you were saying disagrees with the overall stance I really disagree with it, but, but I don't think I don't think that uh, DPS should be the only thing they have. They have. They have. I, I actually asked around on the forums a bit, and I, I proposed three options. And I said, if, you, if given these three bonuses, what would you guys pick for? Uh, if you only pick two of these three, what would they be? And, the, and option one was uh, an increased damage for that that race's weapon. Option two was. Uh, I believe support skills for that weapon, such as the uh, 
a Mars reduction to heat buildup on laser weapons, and the third being uh, you know really strong uh, HP regeneration opposed to buffer HP like you see in a heavy. And I I thought I was going to get a mix of of one and two or one and three, but most people actually really wanted two and three, so they wanted the the HP regeneration and the uh, the support skills to the weapon. Whereas the commando would then get the straight damage bonus, but they would they would lack those support skills, which uh, many would agree are actually quite useful, especially the the Mar guys, and are quite a fan of their their assault bonus. Well, I'll, re I'll repeat my sentiment from last week. I believe that commando should be a little bit um, more focused on being independent, and doing so would have required additional ammo, and maybe um, possibly even additional equipment um, amounts or tr bonuses. While the assaults will be more focused on being able to hold the line or take the line. Uh, let me. This is. I, I kind of just want to throw one out to you guys because uh, we, we've kind of seen this batted around a couple times. But uh, let, I think we all generally agree that the the assault suit, it, by its nature, by I, I think we, we get there to a lot of different degrees. But we all we all think it is an offensive oriented suit. Uh, I, I think we can get behind that. Uh, let me. What if we took a different tack? There, there's a lot of things you can do with an offensive suit that way. But what if you adjusted the commando suits to be to have bonuses to AV in, in some form or fashion? You essentially made them uh, more optimized for an AV role as opposed to a raw DPS role. Well, the nice thing there would be that it would complement the the notion that you would take, you know. Uh, because I've always thought that the ideal configuration for a commando suit would probably be to have a standard light weapon and then an AV weapon so you can handle either either threat. Um, and that would, I guess, uh, lead a certain amount of, of credence to that design. I think it may pigeonhole a bit. I think it may just pigeonhole just a little bit too much. Like, I, I like the idea of... Uh, of, of I like the idea of it having an AV weapon, but I also like the idea of its its bonuses um, still being effective if you are not using it, you know, doing AV. Especially with, you know, the way that vehicles are used right now on the field, um, especially in competitive play. Well, there's a couple things going on here. I mean, for one, one of the, the main features you see in AV weapons is a rather small magazine size. And so the commando's reload bonus is actually quite a... a good buff for that. A huge for, boon. A huge yeah, like, boon. I, I could not use the plasma can until I got the Galenta Commando and now I, I can't stop using the thing because it's it's a lot of fun and that reload just it, it, it makes the difference. So I think in that regard they actually are focused more towards AV. Now the issue being of course that uh, the, the MR and the Mimitar don't have a true uh, AV weapon that, that really works for them. Now Granted, I know swarm launchers do explosive damage, but I think that bonus should go to the Kaldari. But that aside, I'd actually advocate that the commandos have their primary damage bonus type. So Galente would be for, for hybrid blaster, and then they would have a secondary damage bonus type, which would be a lesser bonus, but you could have the option to actually use a different racial weapon and still get the, the benefits. So let's just say uh, Galente would get a, a plus 5% at level 5 with our weapons, and then the plus 10 to, to Galente weapons. And so you kind of hammer in that sense of flexibility. You're still encouraged to use, um, you know, that race's weapons, but you have more options. I think right now, especially with some of the comments they've made about how uh, Mimitar commandos are, are much more used than most commandos because, you know, the combat rifle is so good. The mass driver is, is really quite good that you, you've kind of got that imbalance. And I think if you kind of added a secondary damage type to the commando bonus, you could probably even it out a bit more and give people more options and hammer in that sense of AV because you've got the, the reload bonus and hammer in that sense of flexibility because you've got multiple damage bonuses to different types of weapons. The difference being you're, you're lacking any weapon support skills or any regeneration skills like the assault might get. So it's a little more damage AV focused. God damn it. But you've got flexibility. Hey, Pokey, real quick. Uh, you had on something with the Mimitar Commando. The other thing is, interestingly enough, the the Swarm Launcher gets the... Uh, you know, the damage bonus goes to the, uh, uh, to you know, to the main commando, even though that's technically a Kaldari weapon profile. Um, what if you even opened it up further? What if you reduced the damage buff slightly, uh, but you opened it up to all weapons? Like they can literally pick up anything and use it uh, w with a certain level of proficiency, not as much as the assaults could get, but something like that or perhaps maybe just the av weapons like yeah you know plasma cannon swarm launcher you know they get a buff to either one of those 
or, so or so really both of those. So you're basically proposing a, a, a base damage bonus to all uh, to the light AV weapons for all the suits, not just the ones that are racially bound. Yeah, I, I mean that, that's as a thought, but you would probably have to lower the the damage bonus, the, like the raw damage bonus. So uh, so instead of perhaps like uh, I think it's what equals like a complex plus uh, you know damage bonus, it would be maybe like an enhanced damage bonus, uh, like an enhanced damage modifier. Uh, you know, module that you'd be carrying around just innate to the suit. That, that's certainly an idea. I, I, I'm really not opposed to the idea of making the command as more of a light AV uh, s- uh, solution. I think that's that's really quite interesting. And then making the assaults more of anti-infantry based. I think that's that's certainly worth merit. Like I said, the, the, the reload bonus already kind of pushes them in that direction. I think if you wanted to kind of make that distinction stronger, I think that'd be definitely worth looking into. Okay. Um, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out uh, and I think Cross and Pokey knows where this is going, but my, the two most favorite words that I want mentioned with any drop suit, and I'll just kind of throw this in the room, uh, and I'm hoping somebody will will jump on it, would be the words pirate and drop suit. Uh, is that is that something you, you think? Uh, or let me put it this way, Pokey, how would you, and really anybody, how would you guys want to see pirate drop suits implemented? Which, in my mind, even in Dust, with limited assets, that's potentially some additional words in the spreadsheet when some snazzy colors or bring back the color of an old CK series drop suit or whatever. But what do you guys think about pirate drop suits coming in at some point? Well, I think that's, that's definitely probably more long-term dust support, but uh, for those who don't know how it works in, in EVE, pirate ships essentially get bonuses from two different skills. So for example, you have a pirate suit for a particular pirate faction, and it would get one bonus for uh, every level of, say, Kaldari cruiser, and then a different bonus for every level of Galente cruiser. So essentially what you'd be doing is is leveling up two different skills to kind of give that pirate suit a different angle on on that that class of ship. And so it kind of is, it's a weird sort of different sort of uh, suit in this case that you could have some interesting bonuses and weird mixes of roles that, that would be interesting. Um, as for what I support that, if it is feasible, I would definitely go for that in the, in the long term. I think that adds a lot of depth and, and interest to, to what you can do with a suit. I just think right now, focus your body more on what we have and, and making it work. But uh, giving more options in the future would be, would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that we really have to have a strong racial balance within each role before we could move forward to pirate drop suits. That being said, every time someone utters the phrase pirate drop suits, I risk dehydration because I kind of drool on myself. It, it will probably be the closest thing to that we're ever going to get to an officer drop suit in this game, if it ever does happen. You really think so? Yeah, the chances of an officer drop suit are going to be slim to none, but if we ever do pirate drop suits... Um, the only place I could really drop is through random salvage. I mean, there's no other game mode that could really support its drop, really. Which would also make um, pubs more relevant to a lot of the competitive play and touches on something that Zatara and I were talking about just last night. I don't know. I, I still hold out on a dream that, that uh, you know, with not much... In as much as, you know, Dust is able to, with the development that it has, someday have, you know, officer module parity and officer suits. And I think that would be, like, a really, really satisfying endeavor. Okay. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to throw that out there because that's one of those... That, 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 that is truly one of the things that I... I uh, it, it's... I don't know, I guess you'd call it like a bling item or something like that, but that's really one of the things I've always thought would be really, really cool that you could introduce. Uh, and, it, and it has a lot of neat, snappy little tie-ins with lore and all this other kind of jazz, but it's one of those kind of cool things that uh, if you've done the work and you've done the grind to level up your, your you know, like your assaults and your lodges and different, different racial uh, variants and stuff like that, that it starts to make it very interesting to branch out and actually seek out um, like sort of skill point, you know, you know, aiming points for yourself as a player. For example, if you wanted, I don't know, like a Garista assault, you had to skill up Galente assault and 
Kaldari Lodgy or some some jazz like that. I just throwing it out there just as an exemplar. Um, it, it's really interesting because you would be driven to perhaps get into other play styles or other racial variants that you might not have normally gotten into. And that, that was sort of the, the thought that I had behind it. Plus, it, for those of you that, that play that don't play Eve, trust me, the pirate ships in Eve are are pretty much witch tits. Those things are those things are pretty straight, uh, and they're a lot of fun to uh, they're a lot of fun to fly usually because they get some very interesting one off bonuses. Uh, so. Uh, I kind of, like I said, I was going to use that sort of as like the little icing on the cake as we kind of went through the drop suit piece. We've been on for a while, for about two hours, kicked around a lot of different ideas and stuff like that. And, and the cool thing about having a group like this on is that you could literally talk about uh, anything related to the game, uh, you know, until we're all blue in the face when we pass out. Uh, but I think broadly what I'd like to do is just sort of kind of, Again, we'll kind of close the show out here, but and we'll go through some shout outs and stuff. But I just wanted to, to kind of let everybody know that everybody that's coming on here tonight, and again, a lot of the other candidates aren't on here. Every one of these guys, they're here for the community. I do legitimately think that there are a few that are uh, probably not necessarily those in this room, but that are, are a little bit more interested in themselves, although they are interested in the community. Um, I do think everybody wants the game to succeed. I do think everybody wants the community to, su to succeed. And I think a lot of people, uh, you've heard it time and again, there's more than seven people that can be a CPM uh, given the field of 20 that we have now. I can honestly think of probably 10 fairly easily that would be good CPM members. And it's all about what you as a player think. Uh, what are the kind of people or the kind of guys and gals that you want representing you personally? Um, and for me, I would just kind of offer this. There's a lot of people out in the game right now that can work spreadsheets with the best of them. They can crunch numbers. They can talk high-end mechanics. They can talk new player experience. They can talk uh, any number of different facets of the game you want in, in whatever de level of detail. But the overriding factor for me at the end of the day is literally, are they the kind of person not player necessarily, but are they the kind of person that I want representing me and, you know, the folks that I look out for in the community. And that's one of the things that I, I kind of would, you know, would say pretty much everybody, I, I would definitely, everybody in this room falls within that moniker of guys that I would be comfortable with um, supporting or representing me to CCP and me and other venues in, uh, in the new Eden universe. Uh, now I do think that there are some that are better suited than others. And I make no bones about that. Uh, but I kind of just wanted to, to very briefly, if you guys could all put your player hat on, not your CPM one hat and real quick, uh, as you're giving your sort of shout outs to go away, if you were the player, what is the, the one or two things that you wish the CPM uh, would do to represent you like like not not necessarily game specifics but what are you looking for from the person like for me it's teamwork and communication I want to know that people can work together and come to an agreement or at least an understanding with differences and I want to know that they can reach out to, to everybody and it's not about them it's about the player base so with that what I'd like to do is can, we'll go through our shout outs but again just kind of give us your take as a player again as if you were not running to be the CPM or be in the CPM rather. What are the things that you're looking for as a trait from the people? So with that, uh, uh, we'll kind of do in reverse order. I'll start with Zatara, uh, mostly because his, his name starts with Z and I always hose him. He usually goes his last if I'm not trying to needle Soraya. So uh, Zatara, if you don't mind, uh, if you can go ahead and give your shout out and kind of let us know what, what are the one or two things in, the, in terms of the personality of a CPM candidate that you really want as a player? <clears throat> All right. Thanks for uh, receiving that question too, Jason. I appreciate it. Um, and forgive me if my internet does cut out again. Um, guys, I really just want to thank everyone in here for having me back again on Biomass um, for Soraya and uh, Jason and Pokey uh, putting this together. And uh, thanks so much to Derry for helping us out. Um, I'd like to thank my court mates who have supported me um, all the time through the last, you know, seven or eight months now. Um, like to thank Cookie for being so patient with me as I 
went through all of my struggles. And um, I guess I'd probably like to thank Skeletor for stepping up and taking a lot of the uh, of the you know responsibilities for running FA while I've been you know focusing on this campaign. Um, as for the qualities I want most in a CPM candidate, um, personality wise. Um, I've stated this elsewhere in my endorsements, but um, essentially humility is uh, is probably the number one um, attribute that I look for. I, I want someone who um, is going to, you know, essentially uh, come to every situation from the from the perspective that they can they can learn that they that they don't know everything that. Um, that they, they can see the good in others and things like that that, that are sort of uh, innate in people who are, remain humble. Um, I think the other quality that I care most about is someone who has a strong, um, a strong sense and willingness to play devil's advocate um, with their own ideas, with everyone's ideas, um, even with long-held principles that have just, you know, um, sort of dominated um, public and public thought on an issue. Um, if you can remain humble and play devil's advocate adequately, then I think you're going to be pretty good as a CPM one candidate awesome. and member. <laughs> I, I do, I do, I do appreciate that, Zatara. Thank you very much. Um, and we're going to go to the black jackal next. Um, I'm uh, talking as a player. I want a CPM candidate who shows us what he's doing if that makes sense it like he'll, he'll he, he won't do everything under a shroud of thing he'll say hey guys this is what i'm this is what i'm pitching um this you know he'll put up a post say hey this is what i'm doing uh this is what i'm what i'm applying to the C uh, cp a ccp you know as as a before they even before they even give it to ccp so we know what they stand for and what they're trying to do and also the ability to compromise uh the ability to actually sit back and say hey Fair enough. Okay, my, my idea isn't 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 perfect, and you've got some really good ideas. Let's see if we can come to a middle ground between the two of us. Okay, I appreciate that, Jackal. Thank you very much, um, Pokey. Well, first of all, just you know, a shout out to my corp, and I don't really bring them up as much as I really should, but specifically, you know, Derry and Wright and Jiro, they're my two directors, and honestly, they 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 keep things running when I'm up to my eyeballs and, and other crap to do. So, you know, I really appreciate them. They, they, they definitely keep things going and I couldn't do it without them. So, you know, thanks guys. You're great. Um, also thanks to, to everyone out there who's helped support me in, in the election and, and <laughs> may it be going over ideas or, or proofreading something to make sure I actually spelt my name right or something like that. It's, it's been really helpful and it's good to know that I've got people that are, are really supportive and, and helping me out there. I, again, couldn't do it without you. It's, it's been an awesome team effort. Um, as for the election as a, a player, the way I look at it is I don't want everyone in the CPM to agree with each other. I, I, in fact, I would rather they don't agree with each other. The key difference is they need to be able to get along and reach a conclusion even if they have different opinions. So while you may have a candidate that you personally agree with, you also need to keep in mind that in order for a CPM to operate properly on its own, it needs to have a wide range of perspectives from every angle of the game, you know, from every walk of life. They need to be able to see as a group every aspect of the game. So vote for the, per the person you agree with, you know, that, that, that makes sense. But the other people on the list, think about how they're going to work together as a group, not necessarily if they all agree with your personal views. I think it's important that you, you get those different views in there. Otherwise, everyone's just going to agree with each other and they may not get the best, the best result. And, you know, what you may think is the best result or what they may think is the best result may not necessarily be the best result because you really got to see something from every angle to, to truly grasp what's going on. So when I vote for people, I don't necessarily vote strictly on the issues. It's, it's very important, but I, I vote for them also on the person and, and who they are as a person, how they're going to get along with each other. If someone's completely toxic and refusing to speak to other other candidates, I think that's pretty telling that they're not going to be working well with other candidates. And if they aren't working well with each other, they're not working for you. And at the end of the end of the day, that's what that really matters is, is making sure they're, they're working for you. They're there for you, not for themselves. They're there for you. So if they can't work together, they're ineffective and you can't have that in there. So as a candidate, make sure you pick the people that can actually work as a team for the community, not just their own personal agenda. So, I mean, that, that's really the most important thing for me. And you may have your own philosophy on it, but, uh, but yeah, 
So again, you know, I, I really appreciate you guys listening to this sort of thing and, and coming on to listen to us rant about <laughs> various things. It's, it's good to have you. And uh, we, we love the feedback because you know, again, we're, we're here for you. So thanks. All right. Cool. Cool. Saran boy. Uh, yeah. Um, I just like to reiterate a lot of what everybody else is saying. Uh, first of all, uh, clearly you need good communicators and people who can work well um, in a team um, people who can disagree respectfully, uh, who aren't going to just shut down um, when there's conflict. Um, if I could just add to that something a little different, something that, again, that's, that's a big part of my focus is I really hope, you know, whether it's me or any of these other fine people that are you know running for CPM, I really hope that we get some people in the CPM that carry a populist agenda um, who are really trying to build the community. We're trying to really work with these large corps who have already done so much work to build their their small part of the community. And in some cases, it's not that small. I mean, we're talking corps out there, many of them over 500 members. Um, we need to figure out a way to support these kinds of people because they're doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting out there to make this game great and to make the experience great for players. So a populist agenda aimed at helping these types of corps, I think is going to be really big. And that's, that's a, a part that I would like to play if I were a member of CPM one. Um, some shout outs. Uh, I want to definitely give a, a shout out to Hawk and Pete, my CEO in Molan Labe. Um, he's also a zombie. Uh, that's his other name. Uh, my other officers in the Officer Corps, Thor Odinson, 42, Why Are You Fucked, Zero Bloom, Exion, Mobius, Cathius. These are the original Officer Corps. I'd also like to sh uh, give a shout out to my founder. Uh, the founder of Mullen Labe is the legendary Seth Kamura. And I'd also like to give a, uh, a you know a shout out to some of my former corp mates in uh, Planetary Response Organization. Many of them have gone in different directions or are still, in some cases, together. Uh, I had a great time with those folks in the past as well, and they were the the people that I played mag with, the Contraband Joes, um, the uh, Matthew Obviuses, who is now Cheeseburger and Mullen Labe. Uh, these are all really great people that I'm that I'm proud to know and that I'm that I'm proud to call. Uh, friends. Uh, and again, I just want to say that I love Mullen Labe. And if I missed your name today, I apologize. Uh, but all you guys are important to me. And uh, I, I cherish my time with you uh, in the court. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Hey, real quick, Sir Man Boy, are you going to come on uh, to the show again at some point? I'd love to. This is this has been a lot of fun, Jason. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. And I'll come on anytime you'll have me. Yeah, absolutely, brother. We're, we're definitely going to have to get you on again here soon. Awesome. Um, let's see. And Iron Wolf Saber. Hello, I'm Iron Wolf Saber. I'd like to give a shout out to the Vote Match guys for showing that Dust players are not alone in this, that E players are more than still willing to continue to support you guys um, in all of our endeavors. As a player of what I would like to see out of a CPM, I would like to see the commitment to see the term through because CPM is not going to be easy work. There's going to be some harrowing news, and there's going to be days where you just feel like quitting it all, and you need to be re you need to have the resolve to see it turn through. Because there's so much more things that could happen if you were to quit early and not be a part of that. It can be very disenfranchising to the community. You also need to have the courage to tell CCP no. There's more to the CPM than um, well, I, I've been perceived to be a cheerleader all quite a bit. But there have been plenty of times I've told CCP no. And it's very important to know when to say that and how to say it in a most very respectful and mannerful way. And to be able to articulate your no answer. Because if you can convince CCP for making a bad decision and they decide to not do that bad decision, then that's a victory for everybody in the community. And finally, the um, the commitment to um, bring excellence for uh, the excellence to that. Uh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, man. You, you, if you need a minute, that's cool. I think I'll I think I'll come up some better next week. <laughs> Okay. All right. No drama, man. Uh, again, we really appreciate you being on here. And Del? Yeah, yeah. As a as a player looking towards CPM candidates, I think uh, the two biggest things I can think of would be the accessibility to the community at all times. I mean, I'm obviously people have to sleep or work, but uh, that that's what I look towards for other people. And uh, level headedness. Do you really keep calm in uh, the stressful situation that that might arise? Like uh, with all the hating that uh, I'm sure some of the CPM members will get and the CPM members have gotten 
And uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, say thanks for having me on the podcast again. Yeah, absolutely no problem, Del. Uh, no problem at all. Um, Cross? Well, for shout-outs, obviously OSG. You guys help keep the game fun for me, despite all of the crazy bugs or when the terrain eats my feet for no apparent reason. And to the community in general, I've got a favor to ask you guys, if at all possible. Make sure that your buddies are turning out to vote, regardless of who you're voting for. Anybody who gets elected to the CPM will do a better job and will have a better team to work with if the community is engaged in voting. And on that note, I'm going to move on to the traits for voting that I really focus on as a player. One being teamwork, the attitude and willingness to stand up for ideas that make sense, but to do so professionally and without, and this really is the key bit, without getting dogmatic about a specific method or idea. Keeping the focus on community benefit, which is keeping each other honest and cordial and constructive in the manner in which we're discussing it. And then communication, being active, engaged, and transparent is huge as far as being a CPM. And especially when we're under NDA, keeping that engagement and that dynamic dialogue with the community is going to be more difficult, but really vital and fundamental. As a player, narrowing my own ballot down to a selection of seven, truly the past few days has just been a grueling process because there are so many great possibilities. And at the end of the day, it was those candidates who displayed both a willingness to communicate, stick to their guns, but also, especially when disagreeing with each other, which, as Jackal rightly points out, is very valuable, remained mature enough to be professional and constructive while having that disagreeing opinion. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it, Cross. Thank you very much. Uh, and Sorry you had to come in late, too, but really appreciate you dropping by. Um, Thanks, Jay. Sarazel? Yeah. Um, my my uh, my big thing for for CPM candidates is um, you know definitely um, active participation and communication is big, um, but the biggest thing is is the ability to work as a team. This is, this is a group of seven people who are going to be working together in situations in which they may not be able to go to others for for assistance or advice, and they're going to have to work with each other in in some cases really really closely, and so. The ability to work with the so when you you vote the most important thing is that you can figure out that this person is not only a decent candidate on their own, but that they work well with the other candidates that are probably going to be in in and the other candidates you're voting for, um, and so so it's definitely um definitely the ability to work on a team is is my big one, um and uh with that my uh, my shout outs this week um are uh, Cross Two Pokey Draven the Black Jackal the Tar Rot Animati and Iron Wolf Saber, which all happen to be candidates and may or may not be uh, my personal favorite choices, and I wanted to give them a shout out. Um, but uh, there, there really are a, an amazing group of uh, candidates out there, and as I've said a couple of times, uh, someone's typing on, on the mic, um, but uh, <laughs> um, there's really enough enough great candidates to make a whole second CPM um, this year. And I'm, I'm actually really thrilled that, that we have such a great um, candidate pool to, to draw from. And, and there are so many really good choices. Okay. And uh, Appy is Mike's not working, but she did want me to pass along that she wants to give a big shout out to Cardia Scorpia and that uh, basically she wouldn't be at the position she's at today without his help. And uh, I hope I hope I got that right for you there, Appia. Uh, for me, uh, quick shout outs again, uh, the Podsite crew for helping us out. Uh, if you're an Eve player and, or you're a Dust player that plays Eve rather or something like some, you know, uh, mix of the two, I do recommend that you check out the Podside podcast. They're, they're actually really good, a lot of fun to listen to, and they really did get us started. Um, and so hats off to those guys. I would also like to uh, kind of further the uh, the Eve theme very briefly and give a shout out to Contraband Incorporated. They're the, the crew that I fly with out in Losec. So uh, a lot of fun guys. I know I haven't been on a lot in the last week. I've been a little bit busy, but uh, I really appreciate flying with you guys. And I want to give a shout out really again to the community. And the community is made up of all those toxic forum trolls, all the guys that you run into in pub matches, all the dudes that stomp you in PCs, and all the dudes that drop ISK on a new player, even though the new player didn't ask. It's made up of guys that share fits. It's made up of people that do third-party apps. It's made up of folks that 
know nothing about dust, but are willing to spend their time and create the vote match system for the dust players only because we're essentially second cousins in the new Eden world. But, and, you know, I've said this many times, I would not have met anybody in this, uh, in this channel or really kind of in the, in the larger, uh, sort of Eve world in terms of, you know, the gaming community here without dust. And if nothing else, the thing that CCP gets right is they provide a platform for a community to to grow and to sustain itself and i really really appreciate that uh and, and we we fence with them all the time we throw rocks at them i got it but you know what they did bring us together and don't forget that uh, so shout out to the community i would also like to throw a quick shout out to a couple of the more uh, famous slash infamous media folks in dust uh bam havoc and ceo pyrex and judge radamanthus Played with them this afternoon. Great group of guys to squad with, um, and highly recommend that if you want to, if you want to just talk to them and you run into them, try to seek them out. Try to talk to them. That you'll see that they have a different uh, take on things that that I do certainly don't agree with everything they say, but I really appreciate the fact that they're taking time to put it out in the airways and actually put some effort into it. And for everybody that, that would like to know, both BAM and Pyrex both have been putting up their own takes on the CC, CPM1 candidates. And a lot of the folks in the room here have been putting up their initial ballots on the forum. So again, don't let anybody vote for you. Don't let anybody color your judgment, but use other people as a means of gathering information. So with that, get out there, vote early. Uh, and since a few of you are from Chicago, looking at you, Sir Izell, vote often with your alts. Uh, so again, <laughs> voting from the 7th through the 22nd of July. And with that, we're going to bring this episode of Biomass to a close. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. 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 Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.